So today we are playing um, House of Memories. It is the Katori, Ento, Patagon, and Voice like dealing with anomalies game. And like, I'm just gonna kick it right off. Did you want to change the screen, Nika? Or am I, like, way behind? Uh, oh, okay. All right, absolutely. All right, cool. All right. So, Elizabeth, coming into your office is Billiam. Billiam is the son of William, the disgraced, like, traitor of a um, scientist that abandoned the flamingos. Welcome. And it's just like, okay, ma'am. Um, I had he pulls out his like checkboard. He's just like, we have um, multiple units going into the north to investigate the source of that strange like signal. Um, are you sure we should really like put this many um men into it? Like, it seems like an absurd amount of so like um, I know you don't like calling them soldiers. Um, co-workers into this much danger. Like, they do say those mountains are quite haunted. You believe in that? Also, are you questioning me? This I, is important. I, I, we need I, to get the answers. We need I to get this sorted out. I would never question you, and I'm terribly sorry about trying to interrupt. That's that's completely on me. You know what? You know, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I'm just saying that, like, I mean, Tom's acting up in, like, acting up a little bit we're just kind of worried about he might turn code on us and like if we send out all of these soldiers what if something happens to them then something happens to them uh, you know it's just I look just... forward to reading the report once you're successful oh I I'm going uh, you're going to be reporting the results back to me of this mission so however you get that done, I don't care. Oh. Um, he's just like, I gotta get my coat. And then he just like, walks out of the room. And with that, we get right into the actual game proper. So we are playing again. We are playing House of Memories, and we have Kira playing Katori, and also Elizabeth for a moment. <laughs> we got Cole playing Royce. Hello, everyone. Sept is playing Patagon. Hiya. And Corey is playing Ento. Hello. Absolutely. So we are in Royce's workshop. Voice Patagon, I, all four of you, I think, have been trying to, like, come up with a way to detect anomalies. Like, because, like, you are aware that they exist. Nobody else has any memory of seeing these things. Mm -hmm. So, um, like, you need to figure out a way to detect them. And I imagine you guys are, like, piggybacking on your rift detectors situation. But if you didn't want that, go ahead and let me know what you're doing otherwise. But this, we are in Voice's workshop right now. How do you think it's going, Voice? Poorly. <laughs> oh, is, is it actually going bad? It did. I, um, what do you think the problem is? Like, is it not detecting close enough, or is it being too accurate? Like, is it detecting each one of you individually as an anomaly? Or is it just saying, there's an anomaly? Yeah, I, I think there's just too much interference. Um, the only way it works clearly is if we're, like, really close to an anomaly. Yeah, like, like our own, like, magics are different enough from 
the, the surroundings that, you know, it, it's still picking us up as like, well, you're not of this world. <laughs> I, I need a better way to focus it so it will only get the anomalies that we're looking for. Okay. I Oh yeah, if that, if that is the problem, it's definitely picking up Katori as an anomaly. Like, Katori is 100% an anomaly in this world. Fear. Well, I used to be. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it's like... I think it's very similar to the whole Voice returning home thing. Like, until Voice was, like, back there and, like, set that right, like, Voice would have been considered an anomaly. But now he is, like, the whole silver thing has just set it up that they can begin leaving, and they are out there doing trade and stuff. I think you guys are trading with the bee people now. Mm. Which are just bees. Basically, we need to find a way to root Katori to this world better. Alright, what's the plan there? Well, I have my communicator in my pocket, so you can't can't do that one because we're already good. <sighs> good there. Do you have your communicator in your pocket? Do you actually? Yes, I, don't. I do. Wait. How do you? Wait. Yes, I do. It's right here. Woo. Good. Better than me. I don't forget it anymore. Last time I turned into a cow. Kind of makes an impression on a person. But you're like all big and strong. Uh, I am a beefcake now. That's pretty mm -hmm. great. So, um, Ento, can you give me a 20 cider? Yeah. Oh, success, absolutely. Um, Ento, um, you have seen other people walking around the Silver Thimble that are close enough to, like, the biology of how Katori looks now that you are, you believe that, like, whatever she turned into, like, this um, figure is also from this side of the world. Just there's not a lot of them. And they tend to be very, like, secretive. Or, mm, secretive is not the right word, um, standoffish. Mm. But, like, um... Yeah, j just that, that, like, um... That Katori's home is probably on this side of the world. Like, home in air quotes, I guess. Like, this version. The same as... It's the same as you having two sets of memories in your mind. Katori mm. has that too. And you're the, literally the only doctor that could like put those pieces together. You know what I mean? Because I'm an amazing doctor. Because you're an amazing doctor. Like obviously Patagon's got a thousand memories in his own head from other people. But he knows that they, those are not his memories. But he can call on them. You are literally calling on your life as a pirate and your life as a doctor at the same time. Alright, so did... Alright, um... Ento's trying to remember if he's had very many dealings with these people in his pirate life. <laughs> Oh yeah, roll me a 20-sider. Alright. That's seven, but it's a... Alright. Do you want to remember some folklore about these people? Or do you want to remember... Uh, do you want to have found out some folklore about these people? Or do you want to find out about, like... Geographical locations, like the type of homes that they build situation? It's the exact same, Starless. A 7 and a 10 are the exact same things. <laughs> if, if I do recall, we do have some info on them. Mm 
Oh, which what info do you got? Uh, we do know that they trade with the dwarves and helped the dwarves design parts of their place because of all the caber designs there. This is true. So yeah, you guys would already know the um architecture stuff. So you just wanted to give you some folklore. Yeah, sure. They have um, they call their lakes locks. That's important. And they're they live in high in the highlands of the north of. Let me just move you guys to the map. Like they live up here, but people do not visit them without like invitation like you just don't go there because the the hills are considered haunted by like everybody that goes in there it's constantly misty um but until you while like serving with the sea devil like you guys never robbed those people that would be, be terrible but you did accidentally one time end up in one of their sacred locks that was like they came out in numbers the entire place um, the second you guys got into the lock, the whole thing was surrounded by a bunch of like Highland cow folk that look very much like Katori, and also Lowland cow folk, which look more cow than Katori, but still, you could tell that they're like distant cousins of each other. And the whole time, like they are just they are each holding giant logs carved with intricate stories, and they are in rhythm like hitting them on the ground like almost like a war camp to get you guys out of there you knew it was immediately threatening and you could feel the magic bubbling up from the entire area as though the like the mists that were coming out of the um, mountains were going to attack you for being there Tori's hearing this and she's like so starry eyed and she's just like wow so cool I'm thinking maybe maybe we should pay that area a visit and it might not be a great idea for the rest of us like we not might not be very welcome but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that with Tori with us, we'll be okay. Because mm. they'll they'll see one of their own. And maybe we can get some more information for Katori. And maybe be able to, like, ground her to this plane a little bit more. In order to counteract this issue we're having with the with the the scanner let's do it but do we need to get an invitation though should we try to find somebody who lives up there i'm i'm hoping that because you're one of them we won't need an invitation per se like basically you're inviting us I can also try to work the angle of trying to do some trade with them for the dwarves. Okay. Okay, so just a little fibbing then. All right. I'll try my best, guys. I'll try my best. Yeah, okay. We're going to lie our way in. <laughs> it's, it's not lying. It's just a little just a off little from stretch. the truth. It's, it's like we're, we're stretching out our sweet tart ropes. I, I do want to establish trade. Yes. And Absolutely. I, I mean, I and I am one of them, apparently. So, and I'm inviting you along with me. So, I mean, let's do it. Listen, if we can just barge into the dwarves' domain, I'm sure we can just barge into these people. There. Yeah, uh... So, yeah, we're just gonna... So you guys have to go up around Consonant. Um, but, like, you can see right here. You do have to go around Consonant. But you guys can go... Uh, you can be across the river so you don't have to go directly through Consonant. So you guys don't have to fight the flamingos to get through. Unless you guys want to actively just, like, 
go on a Warpath 3 consonant, and that's a different game, and I'm not ready for that game, but we can do it. Unfortunately, no genocide today. All right, no... That is way too early in this game for you to yeah, say that. Let's, let's not do that. Just, like, not not today, maybe? Maybe we'll later. Do, we'll do a rain maybe, check for, like, maybe on maybe the way two back. years. Maybe <laughs> on the way back we can think about genocide. Yeah, everyone's good. We're we're really, we can do a little war on for right now. Give you guys yourselves a little snack that is genocide of flamingos. Yes. All right. Remember, they're like all clones. What so does it really count? And technically, yes, they are. We have established that in canon that these flamingos are not born. They literally just exist. If that makes them less people, less of people, I don't know. Uh, that's, a, that's a big that's question. That's a conversation, a <laughs> theological conversation a, for another day. It's decade. a deep <laughs> conversation to have yeah. about flamingos. If you're just copy really? pasted, are do you are do you are, are you actually alive? <laughs> like if you were literally just somebody like went to sleep and would like dreamt of useful lackeys and you're what came out. It sounds like something that parents tell their kids how babies are made. Yeah, they just go to sleep and then then you appear. <laughs> <laughs> just woke up the next day and bam there they you dreamt are. of you and there you are <laughs> that's like what a... that's what pim told me when uh when we were little that, that's that's because i asked where twins came from because you oh. know all all warble tingers are, are twins usually and uh she, that's what she used to tell me that i just popped out of she had a nightmare and i just popped out of thin air and oh i you know where you actually come from now though right yeah, 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 and, of course. As a doctor, I, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that, okay. That, that's, very good, very good. that would be silly. Tori's kind of watching him out of the <laughs> yeah. corner of his eye to, like, make sure he doesn't pull out a book or, like, start <laughs> he looking it up. <laughs> he absolutely does. Oh, my God. No! no there was a chapter in here. It's sexual reproduction. Oh, okay. All right. Well, let's see. Oh, God! <laughs> there's there's pictures and everything. <laughs> Very detailed photos and and because it's not it's not illustrated. It's photos. It's, it's supposed specific. to be a flip book for children. <laughs> Literally a picture book. Oh god, a flip book is terrible. <laughs> oh god, it's not one of those board books with the textures built in, is it? So oh, that yes, can... it is. Oh no, no, no. <laughs> There's just two pages that keep pointing, like, go to the last page, go to this page, go to the last page, go to this page, and it's just in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and in and out, and in and out. It's like, <laughs> Moving on. Anyway. As Ento's reading this book in the Highlands, he's just like, oh, I gotta put this away. It's gonna get, like, damp from the, the, the mist. You're gonna have to confront Pim later. <laughs> So you guys do get to like the base of the mountain and like you're not in it in it yet, but Katori, you do feel um there's a charge in the air and also voice while you are in these mountains, your tattoos are glowing quite a bit. Mm, tingly. The fog but... is spicy. Every time I, I go to a place like this, I just feel like a human glow stick. Well, he definitely looks like one, too. Tori, if you start swinging me around the glow stick, we might have some problems. I won't. I was only thinking about doing it. I won't follow through. As long as you ask first. Consent. <laughs> so, Sept, can you give me a 20-sider this time? Sure. So, Pat again. I had this tradition. Okay, a three. Um, so you're gonna, you hear what sounds like a car, like coming, like flying on the dirt, like on the muddy banks. We're about to get isekai. Hmm. Um. No, you still you still hear that car. Um okay. it's uh, coming flying down the road. Your tough choice is 
do you want to um learn more about them or learn about what they're chasing? Uh, let's figure out what they're chasing. I mean, we know they're probably, you know, Flamingo or Flamingo-esque, so I'm more curious. Okay. Why are they here? So, you see, coming out the side of their cars, they have two, like, what looks like giant bug nets. Or, like, one of them has a um, bug net, one of them has what looks like a, um, like a t-shirt cannon, but it's a net cannon. As they are chasing behind... Where is it? They are chasing behind this little, like... Like, little forest sprite-type goblin creature here. They're called Boggles, for the record. Hmm. Yes, the Boggles. Boggles? Hmm. They're very slippery. They are incredibly slippery. But they do appear to be trying to, like, get them into a, um... Like, there's a trap being set. Like, they are fleshing them into a bunch of these other ones that you can now see. Hmm. As the, um... Like, as the truck is, like... And as the car is, like, right behind them. And this is what's happening. They have no idea that you guys are here, but they are encircling this little boggle. Well, what in the world do the flamingos have with these creatures? Huh. Probably not good, right? We should we should do something about that. I mean, yeah, it's 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 ninety five percent chance that it's nothing good. Let's do it. I guess it was too early to call no genocide today. <laughs> Like no, this genocide. is not. This isn't genocide. We are saving the creature from the torment of the. We can start with words. Hmm. Oh. 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 Okay. She puts her caper away. Don't look at me like that. I know I usually go straight for punching, but I'm. I'm trying. Okay. No, I, I respect <laughs> that. I respect that. That's okay. You do see the boggle as it is um encircled by the flamingos. He has a stick that looks like it's just like a reed and he does just keep trying to like stab at it you see him he keeps trying to get back to the river but they keep cutting him off at every path like every time he tries to like, jump into the river they stop him and like cut him off mm. but it's very obvious what he's trying to do is get back in the water and that is what you guys are seeing Rez, right now uh, I would like to use an ability yeah sure uh, it's going to be a broadcast. What are, you, what are you broadcasting? Stop. Leave the boggle alone. So, yeah, um, they're going to immediately be like, like, all turn around and like, see you guys. Uh, roll me a 20 sider like they this is like they hear you and they, like they basically can feel the threat in what you're saying but how well does it land is what the 20 sider is going to be up to my or, voice like, does how... sound pleasant to them though oh so sound pleasant okay like they turn but it's like they could oh. still take it as a threat okay yeah sure <laughs> all right mixed success all right so um yeah so how do you want them to take it they're going to stop but your tough choice is, do you want it to be a threat, or do you want it... How do you want it to come off? I mean, it comes off as a threat. Oh, solid. <laughs> <laughs> they all, like, look at him, and it's just like, it's just the Wanda crew. I think that's, I think that's Royce. It's just like, I, he, I heard he punched through a flamingo. Like, ripped his skeleton right out. It's like, no, that was another guy. Like, that was something that was like, no, I heard it. It's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you rip somebody's skeleton out? Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I could probably do that. 
See, no mercy. He's not going to have any mercy on us. And you see them all like reach in like to the coats and pull out Tommy guns. It's just like, let's do this. And then they turn and just start firing at the entire cliffside that you guys are on. Like all six of them. Because the two in the car both have guns. They can't get out of the car though. Because that's not how tokens work. Oh. <laughs> Like Elizabeth dreamed of two um, flamingos in a car, but she did not dream them ever getting out of the car. Are they like a part of the car? They they might be centaurs, like flamingo <laughs> tops and car bottoms. <laughs> Flaming cars. <laughs> Flamingmobile. Uh, so we're being shot at with with guns. Oh yeah, yeah. you guys are like. They are this opening fire. Like, you guys, the, they're not particularly good shots. So, like, like the bullets are just bouncing all around you. But by, like, numbers, eventually one of these bullets is going to hit one of you. Hmm. Hmm. Except for one of them. One of them does, like... Oh, let me roll to see if he's good. If he got, has him. One of them's trying to, like, net the, um, the boblin. He does not. He does <laughs> not net the boblin. And the boggle, sorry. Boblin is a different thing. Uh, okay. The boggle has... Where does the boggle go, guys? Escapes. Well, I was... But, like... Yeah. But do back you... in the direction of home, I guess, right? Like... You said you're trying to get into the river, so I would assume... Yeah. Trying to get to the river. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It takes advantage of the, like... What's going on here and just leaps into the river. And, like, the one flamingo that had the net... I, I, I'm RPing as though it was a one. Whenever there's a two, I basically just do that. So, um. Does he catch himself with the net instead or his friend? Yeah, he, he totally, he hits, he gets the security guy with the net. Mm -hmm. And like, he just starts like spinning the Tommy gun around and starts shooting the car. And you guys just see the two in the car, like duck down so they can dodge the bullets. So you guys are only being shot at by two people right now. None of them are dead, but, um. So, like, none of the people are dead. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. Is this car smaller than an elephant? Oh, most certainly smaller than an elephant. Uh, I have a plan, everyone. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I'm just going to use telekinesis to lift the car up and block the bullets using the car. We, we're one brain cell here. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, I mean, if you guys both want to do it to make like, you can both give me a twenty sider and then. Sure. Oh yeah, we'll use one we'll eighty to, higher. to yeah. do the same thing. For sure. Oh, that's well, a one. That's a one from Royce. I'm I'm rolling this for posterity, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, what went wrong, Royce? Well, the other option on telekinesis is that you you move it gently, you can control it for a little bit, or you forcefully just throw it away. Uh, so, like, I go to move it to maneuver it, and I just, like, fling them back to the ground. And it doesn't block any bullets. <laughs> I have a very funny idea for, like, later. Um, So you go, because it's two of you both doing it, and you're both just kind of like have like a bit of a tug of war. It's just like, what are you trying to? No, we're trying to get it over here. Situation, and then it's like, and then it just like goes flying into the mountainside. You get it goes over this mountain. Okay, I see. We get some uh, like ragdoll physics happen and just yeah, yeah, off. yeah just absolutely. Like, and like on. they are buckled in, so there's no way that either one of them are going anywhere. And also, they might be part of the car. We haven't decided that fully yet. And you just hear them like squawking as they're flying into like the distance, basically like the fucking goof troop wahoo hoo hoo -wee situation. Oh, that, that won't come back at, at all. Nope, nope. Sorry. Well, two of them are out of our way at least. <laughs> um. Hold on one second. Let me just make sure everything on this page is just fine. Uh, let's just go over here real quick. Um, 
unrelated, <laughs> completely unrelated. There's a bunch of flamingos led by Billiam at the side of a lake, and you just see the um security guards go f- splashing down in their car into this lake. And Billy Billiam's just like, oh, what was that? It's like we're trying to get this work. This is very delicate. And then all of a sudden, you s- like you see that Billiam is seeing um a separate set of waves over the water. Like, the water is completely still. But at the exact same time, it is rippling and giving off waves. Don't worry about that. And thus continues Royce's plan of throwing random things into lakes. As is tradition. As is tradition. Don't fix it if it ain't broke. You see the security guard, like this, the one with the security guard hat, the leader of this group, is just like still in the net as the other one is trying to like get him out of the net. And the other two are kind of like, are just still opening fire at you guys. So, Katori and Ento, what are you guys doing? Um, what if I charge to them to s- knock them down and stun them? You absolutely could charge them and knock them down. Okay. Uh, D- 2d20? 2d20. 19s are 20s and 2s are 1s. Because horseshoe and hand... Oh, that's a 20. That, oh, what's it look like, Katori? What's it look like when you bowl these two over? Or, like, however you take them out? Um, she doesn't say much. She just gets really grumpy because they're just shooting at her friends. So she just crouches down, gets her stance set, and just runs head first right into all four of them and just grabs them all in a bear hug and just slams them to the ground. My bad. So you you just grabbed all four of them around their like weird little necks. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Unfortunately like for legs them. Flailing. <laughs> I'm so impressed ah. right now. Yeah, they go like yeah with a twenty. All four of these like then, all except for the security guard. The security guard like like slips out of your grip, but the other three that you grab like get knocked out, and you see the security guard like reach in and pull out like um. It's like a nightstick, but a stun baton situation. It's got like green electricity coming out of it. And you know that it's pant powered by a mana battery. Uh, and Katori is like pinning these three Ento and you see <laughs> this is you are still currently seeing Patagon and Voice launching a car into the sky. I, you still hear the flamingos. Ah! <laughs> All right, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna pull out my, my my pistol and start firing at the the remaining flamingo dude who who didn't get caught up in the rampage. Diplomacy didn't work, folks. We're going straight to violence. <laughs> straight to violence. All right, aggressive <laughs> negotiations. Work? Aggressive negotiations. <laughs> Give me those two twenty siders, Intel. All my negotiations are aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> but that two is a one because of horseshoes and hand grenades. Oh, perfect. I was I was kind of hoping for a fail here. Yeah, uh, well, you got it. What's it look like? So Ento Ento starts running down the hill, pulling out his his pistol to start firing. What Ento forgot is that he did leg day yesterday. <laughs> oh. oh, he did do leg day yesterday. Oh, no. And he just buckles. His legs just go out from under him, him and mm-hmm. he just starts rolling down the hill. Oh, oh see, see, Patagon, he's got the jelly legs. Yep. You no, know, I was telling you about the jelly legs. Yes, you were. jelly legs. Yeah. I, I'm happy that my legs are, are very short comparison. Oh, he's just rolling now. Ooh. Oh, okay. that looks painful. Did, did any of his um, pew pews hit Mr. Security Man? Absolutely none of them. Like, <laughs> damn it. Like, in fact, he can't find his gun. It's definitely in like the brush somewhere around you. And um, he, uh, this guy takes advantage of the like the gunfire that just like ricochets off of the bullets, and he just comes forward with his 
um, baton, and he's going to try to club Katori over the head. And he did not. He got a <laughs> one. Um, Katori, how did you stop him from clubbing you over the head? Viciously. You take him out. Like, you don't have to kill him. But he is also out of the picture. Okay. Um, Katori reaches up. Because she sees it. She, she looks up just in time to see him coming down at her with the stun baton. She reaches up to stop him. And just kind of does, like, a quick, like, baton flip with her fingers. And just pokes him in the neck with the business end. Just like a little bzzz. Like, not not to kill him. But to be like, bitch, please. Absolutely. dirt. Oh, absolutely. When you use that, the second the um mana battery weapon touches him, you mm. see... You get a flash of another... Another world. What? As, like... Yeah, as soon as what? you... T- like, the mana battery thing, like, it arcs a little bit into you. Not to hurt you. Uh-huh. Like, it's not gonna do any damage. But you see, layered on top of the place that you are right now, a completely other world. Um, where this is, like, misty and kind of foreboding, but it's still, like, beautiful. It's still, like, a gorgeous landscape. You see a world where it's just, like, much happier. Very seasonings. It's bas- it's your home from the seasonings world. Like, oh. the, you see little, like, Katori people, like, running around. And they all, like, have their huge, um like embroidery things strapped to their back and they're moving through the hills with like wagons and just like that is just the nomadic life that was your people and you can see them you can see them living on these hills my fawn mali oh fawn mali got it um is is the terrain um the same exactly the same so, like, that means that current cow Tori knows the way home because she's been here before. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, Hell yeah. Voice, as soon as Katori comes to that realization, the anomaly detector, like, resyncs itself. And it's telling you where the um, nearest anomaly is, and it's not Katori. Well, but it is close. Ooh, we got something. Ooh, neat. Elite? It's, it's, it's not Katori now, but it's somewhere close. What are we going to do with the birds that are not Patagon? You can let us go. That'd be I nice. mean, it's an option, but so you guys are really mean because you were shooting at us. I, only, I, I only had a nut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay, listen, little net boy. I'll let you go. But tell me, why were you chasing the boggle? And I'll let you go. It's just like, um, I mean I promise. You you seem like a real jacked lady and all, but Elizabeth will kill me. Elizabeth? Who's Elizabeth? Um, she She's like a flamingo. She dresses like she's from the Regency era. I don't know if you know what that is. It's like, oh no, very... I do. It's really cute. Um, yeah, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. It's like, and she runs Continent right now. Like, I did not. oh, she's like the mayor of Continent right now. Oh well, I mean, mayor is a little like we didn't actually have an election, but she would have won in a landslide. Oh, okay. Oh. So she's really popular. She's very popular with the flamingos. Now, is okay. it popularity or is it more like she bought her way in? I mean, I, I think it would probably be a little bit of both. Like, I, I don't... I can't think of anybody leading us that's not Elizabeth. Hmm. Mm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. I mean, Tom Honks doesn't like her that much. But, I mean, honestly, he's just... I don't I don't really trust his opinion. But that uh, might be because Elizabeth doesn't trust his opinion. I see, I see. I see. So, if Elizabeth wasn't in the picture... And you were perfectly safe, and nothing was going to happen to you if you told me what you wanted with this boggle. What would you tell me? Oh, if nothing, if like, if Elizabeth wasn't going to kill me, what would I hypothetically tell you? Yeah. Oh, okay. I can, I can tell you that. That hypotheticals. Yeah. All right. Um, we were going to capture them, and we are working on like creating our own version of mana batteries, so we don't have to revol- rely on gibbet because like their last shipment was stolen from them and we need that to power the the dream crystals mm-hmm. so 
That is a crazy hypothetical story. Uh, very interesting. So, what, like, what, what, hypothetically, what power do these boggles have? Oh, it's everything in these mountains that gives a particular signal um, that we were tr- tracking down. Um, Billiam has a device that found the greatest source of it. Like, um, I was told hypothetically that we mostly got it from stealing from the Wander Crew. Hmm. He, okay. like, leans close. He's like, we've got spies. Oh. Oh, so, like, these hypothetical spies, are are they... Oh, no, the just... spies are quite thetical. Oh, oh they're... Oh, so the thetical spies. Um, are, are they Elizabeth spies, then? Oh, they these? are most certainly well some of them are Elizabeth's and some of them works for Bobbert and I know that like they, they told me they hypothetically like if I had these conversations with people they mm, would have yeah. told me that Sal has some too okay but his mostly stick around like the um the folk song side his spies are over there oh, so well, but Elizabeth's spies for the, are except for the dwarves there's a oh, couple dwarves he, he's got working for him Katori uh, kind of slowly turns to Royce with with this with this um this flamingo still in kind of like a very light friendly headlock but still in a headlock. I'm going to walk up to him and I'm going to like flare my wraith form a little bit in front of him and I'm just going to lean in close and be like you should uh you should let me know about some of those names you might have. He's just like, absolutely. I will, um, you look like, um, somebody that knows how to hit somebody, so, um... I do. Uh, They're spines. I do they can remove all their bones. Yeah. Can we, uh, uh, that, that's one of the other ones whispering at him. He's like, oh, shit, fuck! Um, uh, da 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 Alder. Alder is a spy. Um, he works, he's, um, in Alaric. All those are really bad craftsmen, though, so like, don't take anything he asks. But I think that's just a con. He can track people based on what he um, sells. Like, he pretends that it's just garbage, and you keep you hold on to it for sentimental value. But he's really tracking you the whole time and listening to you through the the magic of those items. Um, and Alaric just he wants to sell the entire mountain to the flamingos. Like he he's the way that we got into um lullaby in the first place remind me which one is elder elder is the um older the shitty craftsman at the door yeah no, the, oh, oh wait so i got them confused i'm sorry then alaric is the one that he punched in the face he, right he was he was the main uh councilman that we yeah met. yeah yeah that you punched in the right. face yeah that punched okay. in the face. we didn't like either one of them anyway no no everybody hates alder i i forgot the library guy's name and that's why i panicked Emmerich, right? Emmerich, Emmerich is the historian, yes. Oh, yes. my boyfriend's name. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I pulled that out of my ass. I was just, I did, did not have the list of what I named the dwarves on me. I was just like, I hope I'm right. Yeah, the rest I of mean, the you are now Tavian, because I wrote it down. Callum so. and Serene. <laughs> and we met Lyra, Merrick. Yep. It's, it's written down now, so. It's true. Um, so she still has the, like, pretty much all three of them, except for security guy and a headlock. Oh, yeah, so, security guy is, Royce like, unconscious. Good. Stay the way. That is mean. Okay. Done by Tan. Do we have any more questions, guys? No. Oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. How did I go ahead? Oh, just just like now, I think uh, I think they're been helpful. Uh, how many more of you flamingos are out here? Um, we uh, well, there's the there's a group to the north, um, down in the canyon. We gotta watch the river. It, it was very dangerous. That's where we found um. And he looks around. He doesn't see the um the boggle anymore it's just like oh that's where that guy was from i don't know where he went she's gonna be so mad um but like they're dealing with ghosts oh ghosts yeah ghosts you know they the flowy robes they scream a lot neat cool 
I love punching ghosts. I don't. Ghost I'm not. I I'm not on ghost. I'm not on ghost capturing duty. That's that's them. How do you capture a ghost? Oh, those cool things that they got from Gibbet. Um, they like they shoot like a lightning thing, and they got like a hook on them. Huh. We've got we got three people with those. Don't get hit by those. They'll knock you out. And he like looks over at the security guard like that. Hmm. Ah, so do you think this uh, stun baton then? And she still got it in her hand because she never dropped it. Would work on a ghost. Do you think? Do you think? Hmm? I mean, I think it could. Um, but like, I didn't try. I, I'm not. I'm not high enough pay, pay grade to be able to use one of the cool things. Uh, That's fair. Uh, Don't you worry about it. I'm gonna try it out. And she's totally pocketing the. The stun baton. It's Absolutely. Yes. So do we, are we letting them go now, or are you just gonna choke them out? Um, I don't know. What do you think? This one provided lots. Of, wait, one last question. The spies that aren't dwarves, that are apparently on uh, around our area. Where where can I find them? Theoretically, if I was gonna go looking for them. Theoretically, and I've only heard whispers about those ones, because, like, I, I'm part of the, the, the North Squad, the Continent team. I'm not allowed to go to Silver Thimble, although I, I have heard you guys have good food. Um, It's really quite delicious, actually. Oh, is it? Like, I I want, can I, I mean, if... Plus, Katori's if, cooking's also really good. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you. I mean, I'm, I'm a little peckish right now. Anybody got it? I, I, back to the matter at hand. Um. Oh, here, here, have this piece of candy. Oh, shit, nice. Uh, roll me a six-sider. Five. They always <laughs> roll a five. It's always a five with the candy. <laughs> it's at this point. I'm trying it's so hard. I'm trying so hard. It's like, oh, this is delicious. I, I, I where did you get shrimp flavored candy? Oh, you know, around. <laughs> no, no, nope, nope, nope. Refund in that. <laughs> These are fun flavor days. Yeah, it's, it's, it, that, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's a flavor thing. All right. Ento, like you feel like little hands like helping you up to your feet. Uh, oh, oh, th th thank you. What was... What was that? And she's like, and you see like this little like boggle guy, like like up to his feet. I like helps you up. He's just like, thank you all. Um, except for Maddish, imagine he has a ridiculous Scottish accent, but I'm not gonna do it. But just know, <laughs> just think about a goblin with a very Scottish accent, and that's you'll get the boggle. He's like, my name's Taddy. Put her there. Ento shakes his hand. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet all of you. I thought they were going to put me in that net. They're not very good at it, though. They chased me for miles. Yeah, Oops. most of these flamingos are pretty inept. Yeah, we, we found that they're kind of like clones-ish, so we're not exactly sure they're all, you know together like I don't know what that means but I'll hear you penguin guy you, you're from here right this area I am a spirit of this here river you, you wouldn't happen to know where any more of uh, her people are would you he looks over he's like oh hello uh, he like he walks up to Katori and like puts his hand out to shake it. Your hand is like, I'm Taddy. And Katori is kind of like, oh God, which one do I let go? So I can shake hit Taddy's hand. And so I let go of the one that's been telling me that 
all the information this whole time. Not the other two. The other two are in the other arm. Okay. All right. And she reaches down and shakes his hand and says, Hi, I'm Katori. Nice to meet you. Um, are you, you're from here though. Like, yeah, they're, the Highland folk are right up there. And he like points the direction that the river is running down from. And she's like, but you got to climb some like hills and the hills are dangerous right now with all of those like accursed birds. No offense, friend penguin. You don't seem nearly as terrible as these guys. Well, thank you. Yes, I, I try not to be. But what's a warble tinger doing here? He like walks up to Ento. Oh, I'm just traveling with my friend Katori. We're we're, we're heading back to her to her home. She she invited us. Ah, yep, that makes sense. Checks out. Highland the Highland folk are very close with the warble tingers. Like very the liminal council will be happy. Like all of working together, mm-hmm. like the faithful yeah. should. Yes, that is very true. Royce isn't hiding the look of confusion that's on his face right now. Did they just say liminal? Mm. Yes, the liminal council or the liminal court. It changes. I mean, it doesn't change. They both mean the same thing. Well, Daddy, uh, because I'm a little busy wrangling these here flamingos at the moment, and she puts her arm back around the singular flamingo that is now maybe sort of her buddy, but not quite. She still has a lot of questions for this particular flamingo. She's not letting him go. Uh, Could you please explain to my new friends here the information they need to know about the council? Because I'm just really, I'm just so busy. I I need to get more information out of these guys. I am so sorry to impose upon you. Oh, and, and Yeah, I gotta, I need to help her and I gotta find my damn gun. I I dropped it on the roll down. Oh, Teddy's like, oh, here. And he, like, sticks his, like, reed into the ground. And you guys see, like, seaweed, like, well, seaweed. Like, river, river fronds coming out of the, um, river. And they just start, like, wrapping around the flamingos and binding them. And they also, like, pull their gun, your gun out of the bushes and hand it back to you. Oh, th- th- thanks. You're welcome. But anyway, and it's just like, and while that that is happening, not in slow motion, but not super quick, it's just like, yeah, the Liminal Council, they, um, they live with the Warple Tingers, and he just, like, draws in the dirt what looks incredibly like, what if a rabbit, or what if a Warple Tinger was a fertility statue? Like, one of the ancient fertility statues, you know, like, giant Damn. hips. Yeah, that. Dang. So, so it looks like Ento's mom. Yes, but like, yeah, but a lot more ass. <laughs> I am looking. Uh-huh. It, this this makes me uncomfortable. And he's just like, he like puts his hand over it in a very like shamanistic way, and um, you see, like like a hologram but not like a magical hologram like a little illusion of it it's just like the council or the court whichever i said um he spent it are led by the she like the progenitors of the warple tingers we believe like they all look like the warble sometimes they don't look like the warple tingers though so like that might just be a myth but they live in these amazing trees with carved out like stone homes. It's fascinating. Can you can you remind my companions here of, of where that is for me? Oh, absolutely. So what I need uh, so we are currently in seasonal. Mm-hmm. It's like I've traveled a lot, I know names. And then next to seasonal is bone meal that's the desert but if you go directly above bone meal uh, like you're gonna get into the archipelago that's a great place um it's really cool very just like statuesque and he doesn't know how to say 
Mediterranean, but you know that's what he means. But then if you continue to the east from there, that is where the um where the council is. Mm. On the court. It doesn't seem too far. It's uh, really not. I mean, in the scheme of things, how do you travel? Uh, Ship. Nah, there's your first mistake. Well, our ship goes on land and in air and in ocean and in between. Hey, Alan, question. Yeah, go for it. Uh, what he has described, does that match up with like the map that I got from my dad at all? It- Exactly. It 100% okay, cool. matches up with that. Cool. And like, you see Taddy like going around like picking these flamingos' pockets while they're like tied up in the in the the river weeds. As he's like telling you the story, like, and he explains that like the um. The liminal court is just like this group of like very powerful spirits or fairies. He's not sure what he is either, by the way. He keeps he interchangeably uses the word spirits and fairies. Okay. He looks nice. Like, it actually looks a lot like this. I think that's why I moved here. Hmm. Well, thank you for the information. Oh, you're welcome. He's just like, I'm going to take their stuff, if you don't mind. You know, Not at all. I think yeah, it's you're, all yours. You're entitled to that. Yeah. He puts the security hat on. <laughs> Very fitting. Yes. Okay, okay. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to look at the three flamingos that are conscious. We're going to let you guys go. Um, I need you, all three of you, to tell them that the spookiest ghosts you've ever seen are up here. Just like, what do they look like, though? I need like I need to us. paint a... Um, what do they look like? Imagine yeah. the devil of a blue dwarf mm. that can rip out your spine and use it as floss is what's up here. And a wraith of a majestic creature, such as myself, that will bite your face off. I will. I'll do it. I'll crush you. She, she will. She actually scares me. They are terrified. But before, wait, hold on. I have one more question for you. And she turns to the one that she's been grilling this whole entire time. Still sucking on his candy. She's like, I can't believe it tastes like shrimp. I know it's fascinating. It's so weird, and I love it so much. Anyway, um, names of the spies in Silver Thimble, please. Theoretically, if you were to have these conversations and having this conversation with me, I uh, never got the information from you. I need names. I, as far as like the dwarves in the Silver Thimble, those are run by Bobbert. I only have the most vaguest um things. Uh, we have Tisk. We put Tisk in place a long time ago. Um, like Tisk is definitely on our payroll. And Katori, give me another name. Or Kira, give me another. Like Kira, oh, give me a name oh, of somebody God. that is a spy. Oh. Um. Uh. <laughs> the, um even have to be a person that exists we can see them later okay um flan flan i really want some flan right now all right oh, i want man. snacks there we go oh hey now that that's is what he said that the devil of a blue dwarf that can whip out your spine and use it for floss looks like you know that oh, yes. looks exactly like 
what I picture the flamingos think about when they hear yes. about what I do. Flawless. Flossless. Flossless. <laughs> he doesn't have spines yet. Yep. He won't be flossless if they Flamingos are ninety percent spine, so it's gotta be terrifying. <laughs> I mean, what does the skeleton <laughs> of a flamingo even look like? I am scared to Google that. I'm gonna floss. Google does it just look like floss? Skeleton. Um. Yeah. Are we all googling like uh, flamingo yes. skeletons? Now? <laughs> yeah. I mean that that neck, that neck, and the legs. Least. Yeah. Very, oh my god. Very so, sticky. Oh geez. Yeah. Yes. Very floss like. Yes. Yeah. That's Do they have to pose them with the fucking leg up? That just seems <laughs> yes. rude. I mean, it's their natural stance. I mean, it's muscle memory. It's bone memory, right? Like I do like this. Memory. Somebody has a lawn flamingo with a skeleton riding on the back of it. Anyway, back to the game. <laughs> All right. So, like, um, Taddy's going to, like, take care of these guys for you, and he will, like, usher them out of the swamp like you see him like not, not swamp the highlands he's walking behind him like hurting them like if they go too slow he just whips them on the butt with his reed hey thank you so much come visit us sometime friend thank you bye all right so yeah um where are you guys going okay so for the record the anomaly is the same direction and then you have to take a left Instead of taking, if you take a right, you get back to Katori's home, or like, new Katori's home. Take a left, you deal with, um, the anomaly first. I feel like we should deal with the anomaly first, guys. What do you think? I, I'm the same mind, you know. We don't know exactly how long some of these last. Yeah. And, 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 and if our detector will, like, hold out. Um, or how dangerous they can be. And exactly, and if it's Your home will anybody. still be here. Yeah. Um, right? Royce well, says your home will still be here, and the world yeah. kind of shudders. Oh, well, that's well, that's for well, right. I, world, I, I let's like chill. It. Let's chill, okay? That's. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, I don't like that either. All right, that's scaring me. <laughs> Uh, Can we 3D print, print some flamingo skulls? I want to now. I, I literally want, like, have everything I need to 3D print a flamingo skull. I'm gonna 3D print a flamingo skull, everybody. It's gonna can, happen. Can the spine be, like, attached all the way down? That might be hard, but I bet we could make the okay. spine with this. Oh, you know what? Fuck it. We're gonna do this. I'm gonna 3D print a flamingo skeleton. Uh. You can make a flamingo flail using the spine as the Oh my chamber. god, you could? It'd be oh. so great. <laughs> Oh my god. I should just do that to add to my bone weapon collection. Right? I don't roll physical dice, Puppin. Because I exist on the internet. Anyway, back to work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So you guys, are, you know about this coming up. So you're going to see it from above. Like, you guys are, like, approaching. And you do see, like, a group of, like, three of the security ones with, like, the, um with their catcher weapons like all like arcing electricity and then just one that is just like using a what basically looks like a garbage can lid as a shield to try to box this um creature in and they are having a time of it this like ghostly horned creature is ripping through them like you know that there were more and like you can see the bodies of them laying on the ground but this creature is like screaming like a banshee at them and like ripping them apart. But when the three approach them with the catching guns, they are actually like actively getting it to like calm down. Hmm. I don't think talking's gonna do anything here. No. Probably not. But we're all agreed that we're anti flamingo for the most part, right? Yeah, let's let's just chill on like actual murder today. I've been getting a lot of uh, cease and desist from the other departments about uh, paperwork and dealing with that sort of thing. So, oh, this this is an out of department situation. There's, there's no Trust department me, records about this. They'll still find a way to get <laughs> a record fair. of this. 
<laughs> Black Ops still has paperwork. I haven't, I haven't gotten with the captain yet to make a super secret division of just clandestine operations quite yet for, like, flamingos. So... I don't really want to be on that team. I think it'd be lots of fun. I want to murder some flamingo. <laughs> <laughs> so, so let's try not to. But if it happens, it, it if it happens, it happens. I hope it happens. Uh, we can make right. it. Let's unleash the hell. Let's All right, do uh, it. Katori. Yes. My legs are real, real shot right now, so okay. could you just throw me at the flamingos? Most certainly. Cool. I don't want to walk over there. Katori, if you're going to throw Ento at the flamingos, what, what, what's the one-liner right before it? Yeah, if you're going to caber toss fucking Ento, do you hit him with a one-liner before you do this? <laughs> oh no um yeah pretty much just like prepare thy butthole <laughs> prepare <laughs> thy butthole <laughs> clench your cloaca flamingo fuck <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, both of you give me a twenty sider for like your random caber like warble dinger toss. <laughs> All right, so we got a thirteen. All right, so we're gonna take um the higher one, which is Kira's thirteen. Um, Ento, your legs are so limp that like you're even weaker than you thought. So, um, Katori has to go even harder to throw you. But who do you hit? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit the one closest to me. As I'm flying through the air, I'm gonna pull out my my war bolting or sword and just aim straight at him. But like, not it's not straight at him. I'm not trying to kill him because we're not trying to kill people. But like, I've got it so that the flat of the blade is out, and I'm just trying to like clothesline him. <laughs> Absolutely. He just turns at the last stack and he's just like, what'd you say? <laughs> and yeah, now you're at the feet of a banshee that is like looking down at you, which looks a, is definitely like a ghostly figure of Katori's people, you know? Very highland cow, like looking just humanoid as like that flamingo is rolling around. Not... Not you didn't like collapse his windpipe co completely, but enough. <laughs> he's like wheezing. Yeah, he's just really trying. It's like you just hear the squeeze. <laughs> I just I just give a thumbs up to the banshee. Like we got you. Who's next? <laughs> it's like, oh, you see, these two security guards have like in that moment have managed to hit the um, Banshee directly in the back with their, like... Again, it is green, the green lightning of using mana batteries from Gibbet. Um, and, like, they have... And, like, the Banshee just, like, does the arcing back thing. And, like... Aww. He's just, like, screaming as his eyes are, like, going, like... Almost, like, they're going from, like, a bright green and, like, you see it start to fade... Like almost becoming what like what null metal looks like. No. But at least not gone yet. I'm just saying that those two are distracted. This one runs up to Ento and is going to try to like hit Ento with his shitty shield. We're gonna see how that works out. Um Ento, he's gonna like bring the shield down, like you know Captain America fighting um Iron Man scene where he brought the <laughs> shield down on his chest. That is what he's gonna try to do, but on your throat. Um, but Rude. what's his tough choice? <laughs> um, so he can. Oh, uh, he can either get the the general area of the throat. Or 
sure he can like hit me in the chest, but if he gets the general area of the throat, I'm going to grapple him. Oh, I do want to see the grapple. All right, so he's going to hit you in the general. You're going to take two damage from that. Okay. Um, but you get to make an instant attack right now as you are grappling him. I'm going to I'm gonna bash him in the side of the head with the pommel of my sword. I'm here for it. Give me that roll. 18, absolutely. Yeah, so you take this one out, like, unconscious. Not dead, but, like, unconscious. Unless you want him dead. I'm cool with that, too. I mean... Old. I mean, I might have, I might have hit him a little too hard in the temple. Um, oh no, his leg starts just like, <laughs> like twitching. You see, Ento's been going to the gym. Ento has been going to the gym, and like, it wasn't Arms Day yesterday. Doesn't know his own strength yet. Fucking jacked. <laughs> Got make those gains for days. All right, Patagon voice and Katori, what are you guys gonna do? Um, I think uh, I'm going to take the my uh, chainsaw out to do a the zero AP magic strike against the uh, gun arm of one of the flamingos that are behind the uh, the spirit there to try to basically disarm them so they can't uh, zap again. Oh, you don't want to fly, too? <laughs> Not yet. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm open. Open. <laughs> I'm open. I'm <laughs> open. I like it. He, he's a flightless <laughs> bird. Voice Not is a... just on the ground. Uppies. Uppies. You don't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not a flightless bird. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. I might be flightless, but I'm not fightless. Put up your dukes. <laughs> Patagon, you got flippers. Flippers. <laughs> a little different. Right, I'm armed in it. Them. Yeah, I know Magic Strike is like a, um auto hit. No, you want to do zero AP, right? Yeah, the zero AP one. Okay. So shooting a straight line, basically, to try to, you know, knock the weapon out of one of those flamingo hands. All right. Roll me a 20-sider. Let's see how that one goes. Absolutely. What's it look like when you magic strike with the chainsaw? Is it when it fires? Does it look like the chainsaw? It's like, is it actually still going? Yeah. So I always thought this kind of like it, like it starts spinning up and, and then starts glowing. And then the strike kind of just comes out of the chain more than anything. And it just like goes in a straight line and just almost like it just like extends out of the end of the chainsaw. So. Yeah, because I was picturing, like, um, Legend of Zelda, Link's sword in the first one, where mm -hmm. it looks exactly like the sword, but blinking. I'm thinking exactly like yeah. the blade of the chainsaw, but still spinning. Exactly, yeah. Just like, it's it's almost like a ghostly image of it just, like, flying through the... Okay, uh, good. I'm glad we're on the same... Uh, like, like, he looks over at the last second, he's like, what the fuck? This isn't... And his arm comes right off. <laughs> oh, oh, God. <laughs> You've disarmed him. <laughs> He's like, ah! Hey, hey. He falls First on the ground, just like, also kicking his legs out. He shot him with a chainsaw. Nobody come at me. <laughs> not at all. I, I, I was going for non-lethal. Not, not, you know, it's still going to hurt. Yeah, you said you were going to disarm him. You did it. This is all within the prior guidelines that I've set out, so we're good. We're good. You got a doctor here. He can't walk, but he's still here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, voice and Katori. Like, the last one is, like, holding the Banshee, but you see the Banshee, like, spin around because, like, the capture thing is not, like, as effective, and he's just staring at him. Like, and he knows that the Banshee, like, if he gives up for a second, the Banshee ha will have him. You know what I mean? How? What are you guys going to do? Well, we've got a couple options. Do you want to fly too? <laughs> I know you really want to toss me. I do. I love it. It's so much fun. All right. Uppies. 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 <laughs> Whenever we want Katori to toss us, we just need to say uppies. <laughs> yep. Toss me. 
Oh. All right, so a seven for one. All right, Royce, I hope yours is better. No. Nope. No. Nope. nope. That's the second no. one from Royce. Let's go. So oh, how far does she toss wrong? me? What goes wrong? Ah. <laughs> uh. So I just end up over on that mountain, right? It's way over there. Oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> Wee! wait. I don't know if everybody can see how, like the moving. Is it is it possible for like, um, I throw Royce, but he takes out the banshee and the flamingo? Yeah, I, I, yeah. You guys tell me how it goes. What do you think? Obviously, I'm not sticking the landing. So throw me what? just wherever you please. Oh, this this will actually go really cool. So okay, Royce, she tosses you, and like at the last second, the flamingo looks up with his gun and catches you in that, and you start to feel your AP get drained away, and then like. You go into wraith form immediately. Oh, sweet. And you, you mingle together with this banshee. And, like, you guys just... You no longer see the banshee, everybody. You just see voice being held by this gun. But, like, it is taking his AP away at a tick of, like, four per turn. So voice is down four AP already. And, like, the flamingo is in panic. And he's just like, uh... And he's just like... He, you see him, he's about to, like, supercharge this gun, everybody. Like, he's about to turn it into, like, lethal mode. He's setting the phasers to kill. So, Patagon, Katori, and Ento, how are you guys going to stop Royce from just, you know, dying? Um, well, I can draw all the attention to myself. I can provoke, right? Absolutely. All how are you right. going to do that? Um... Well, it's time. It's time to whip out the giant log. It's time to just beat some fuckers down, right? It's flatten some birds, flatten some flamingos. Um, and um, I'm gonna point um the caber right at the flamingo, and oh, and uh, Katori will just lean forward and go. Do you know who you should really fear among these mist? Uh, me. I mean, I do. I really do. Um. Uh. I to, and like, I don't. He, oh, it's provoke. I don't need to roll. Yeah, and it's like he's just like he does it. Like he turns it away, and it looks almost like very Ghostbustery. Like he pulls the gun away from Worth, and like you see the arcing green lightning as Worth collapses to the ground. All still, no sign of that banshee. Um. As like he is coming, for, it's like ripping up the ground around you guys. Like, like you see it, like the the um the null effect of this shot, like the fact that it steals AP. You can see it like carving through the mist and carving through the grass as it's like coming across. Like it's gonna go towards Patagon and then it's gonna hit Katori. That is his goal. But you guys all have roles you can do before that happens. Voice is free, but voice has to go last. Okay, so just roll. Yeah, you guys, well, tell me what you're going to do then, roll. Or maybe you don't even have to roll if you do, just tell me you're going to do something cool enough. I mean, I just bitch slap him with my log. Abs yeah, fucking bitch okay. slap him with the log. Do, uh, uh, do, do I need to roll then, or? Uh, yeah, I, I, like that one okay. I want to roll. All you right. guys all got a duck. Yeah. I'm going to turn him. I don't want my dick to hit you. <laughs> uh, so I will, uh, I, she's just going to run forward and smack like uppercut with with her caber just with the caber yep might as well no, it's hold beautiful. it out i might as well use it you just see the fucking flamingo go like get the whole like that beautiful scene whenever somebody uppercuts somebody and their feet go basically like horizontal that happens and then he just slams back on the ground next to the rest of them, leg twitching. Hey, Royce, um, you know what happens when you roll a one on smite? Yeah. That's happening with the banshee in your head right now. Oh, cool, another one. <laughs> you have, like, a Scottish ghost living in your head. Cool, you can, he can, he... He, you can duke it out with the other guy in there. <laughs> he has enough occupant 
It, it, maximum <laughs> occupancy has already been met. <laughs> the fire department's gonna come. The authorities. Oh I man. Just, just keep a handle on your your own sanity there. I, I know. Just don't let the voices get to you. It's fine. Nothing untoward myself is gonna happen. How do we, how do we get the how do we get the banshee out? Of, of I know where to. Oh, roll me a twenty sider. Uh, oh, I'll, all four. I'll... No, all four of you roll me a twenty sider. I okay. guarantee one of you have heard it. I just need one success. I don't like. I just don't want to be sure that you guys aren't all just uniquely idiots. <laughs> me. Just me. <laughs> it's fine. Ento, can you roll me a twenty sider? Just in case it's a twenty. Like it's all. Like even if it's a one, you guys are fine. It's 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 rolling the dice. My my internet's a little yeah. The roll twenty has been real bad later. lately too. Let me push it again. See if it does anything. Might need to refresh. That's what I had to do a second ago. Like when I was like saying that the flamingo got like horizontal. It wasn't doing. Right, okay, you get there. You is. guys all know it. Um, you want to exercise, people? You want an exorcism? Belltown. Yeah, I go to Belltown. Belltown will get the ghost right out of you. Yeah, but I'm like half ghost. Oh, Just yeah, don't stay it. there after midnight, or like have a charm that does the right stuff. Next trip is Belltown. Make a note. I'm Noted. scared of Belltown personally. I mean, you probably should be, but we gotta get this. You know what they say? Three's company. True, Come on, true. knock on my door. They're always waiting for you. Thank you. Mm, you're welcome. <laughs> when you're here, your family? Oh, God. That's Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> I used to well, work at Olive Garden. <laughs> endless soup, salad, and breadsticks or something. Yeah, I made right? those breadsticks. Like... Don't eat those breadsticks, people. Why? I've dropped Wait. so many on the floor. Oh, my God. <laughs> floor food is just nature's seasoning. <laughs> He is. Olive Garden outside the honor mall, everybody. <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> That's just a joke for like three of us. <laughs> I don't know exactly oh, what you're talking about. <laughs> well, shall we check our anomaly detector and see? If... Oh, right. Yeah, the anomaly. Right. The anomaly. I mean, the anomaly. The, the, the nominal anomaly anomaly. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. <laughs> Anomaly. <laughs> Anomaly. <laughs> this game is going so off the fucking rails. <laughs> I mean, when you have a banshee stuck in your head, you say things. Oh my god, the banshee is definitely just manana. -na. <laughs> just. Incredible Scottish accent, though. Again, I cannot do a Scottish accent, and I will not insult them by it. What if I make them fight put, in my head? I fucking put a Scottish ghost in a dwarf's head. I was promising I wasn't going to do Scottish dwarfs, people. <laughs> <laughs> boy. Should I start talking Scottish accent? That would be just ridiculous, <laughs> suddenly. Like, what happened to Royce? Don't ask. Just... Embracing my ask. culture's <laughs> roots. He, he got ghosts in his blood. <laughs> That's so fucking true and messed up. <laughs> it's really true. <laughs> okay, uh, so anomaly. Patagon, you guys check the anomaly um, detector, and yeah, it's um. Roll me a twenty sider. Uh, Royce and Patagon for this one. That's a one, isn't it? No, that's an 11. I can only see one of the ones right now. Uh, mine might be a one. No, it could be. It's a four, but we're going to keep the 11. Um, Patagon, the water in this, like, like, in this river here, or like small creek or whatever you want to call it, is slightly anomalous. Um, when you guys, like, have the detector close to it, you can see that it is both very calm and like when you focus on it, you can see a rushing river there as well. 
All right, this this water source that's generating this stream uh, definitely has some anomalous features to it. So I believe if we follow it, we might get closer to what we're looking for. Sound, sounds like a plan. All right. Um, Katori, you know that you are approaching the lock. Like, the large lock. What's the name of this lock? Katori. Ooh. Uh, I, I don't know how locks are traditionally named. Uh, lock Nessie. All right. Lock Nessie it is. Oh, the Loch Nessie. Oh, Sept. There you go. <laughs> it's both close and legally distinct. Okay. I don't think anybody can sue us over Loch Ness. Uh, Nika got with it. <laughs> Loch Nessie. Oh, I hate the Loch Nessie. <laughs> Not Cryptid <laughs> finders be like. <laughs> I hate the Loch Nessie so much. <laughs> Uh, as we travel, Royce is going to whistle a tune. <laughs> is it the Lock, Lock, Lock Loman? Lock Loman is like, you take sure. the high road and I'll take the low? Yeah. Um, I'm doing this to restore 2 AP to everybody. Very good, very good. Is this an ability I have that you said I could do? Oh, absolutely, for sure. Um... So yeah, you guys all like fill up your two eight, like get two AP back from it, and like I think well, you are whistling it. It is definitely one of the Banshee's tunes, but not like a bad one. Like it's an old. Basically, you're whistling a folk song mm. from from this place, and it might be the first time that you've ever heard it. But like Katori is like really into it. Like you, Katori, you find I yourself think. like like tapping your or like nodding your head with it. And like bringing up the next bits of it. And Patagon, you've heard this one before. At least one of them in your head has been. And then Ento, like you realize that what he's whistling turned into a sea shanty at some point that you have sung on the deck of the um of ships thousands of times with like your whole crew. So you also know it. So you're all just like walking as squad with wow. fucking playing a sea, a sea shanty. Just start humming along with him. Mm-hmm. And so totally it, into it. It's echoing yep. throughout these cliffs, and you see, like, the mists are, like, dancing with the song. That's and, like, so cool. voice, you are glowing even brighter blue. And, like, Katora, your one eye is showing you one world and your other your other eye your brown eye gross um <laughs> i i caught it immediately phrasing we're still doing this. correct katori walking around butt out no that's not it i mean she's done it before <laughs> i've done it before i have it's not I, don't like, I don't like the idea of you sensing magic through your butthole <laughs> that's fair. I feel like that's probably not a good idea. Mostly because lie. I don't think I can like ever actually do it without it being terrible. <laughs> that like we shouldn't do butt stuff on Twitch. Yeah, not a lot of butt stuff on Twitch. Uh uh-uh, uh, shouldn't. Uh-huh. I feel like that's again. Keep the... that. Everybody, don't worry. That's like that's our OnlyFans, everybody. <laughs> service. Yeah. Don't worry. Like after dark. Join our sure. OnlyFans. <laughs> Katori's, Katori's brown eye. Check out our link tree for that. Yeah. Yep. Check us out. I already signed up. Uh, you got to to join those games. You have to sign up through the not safe for work um, Discord that we have. <laughs> Plunge that boy! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my fingers. <laughs> we sure have gone places tonight. Yeah, really have. Um, adventures. Right. <laughs> so, so we are, we are. Approaching Loch Nessie, I guess. It's not Loch Nessie. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And, like, you guys do see a bunch of flamingos trying to get a car out of the fucking Loch Ness. Nessie. 
And Billy Am's just like, come on, that's gonna mess up the whole thing. So get him out. And like so that's going, where it went. I went far. That's really impressive. I really outdid myself that time. And he's like, you see the two in there being like, I don't think we're the two in the car, like unbuckling themselves. Like, I don't think we're in here alone. I think there's something in this water. And like, you see Billy being like, Billy Ann being like, I know we're here to capture that, please. Like, I don't want to be killed by Elizabeth. She's very threatening. Billy Ann also has a name tag like Willie Ann had. I'm just, but it does say Billy Ann. Is this the part where we're just like standing right behind them? Just you like... are hundred percent standing right behind them, like because they are like like throwing grappling hooks out there to try to get the car, but they're bad. And I lean forward and just be like, "Oh!" and like scare them into the water. <laughs> oh, for for fucking sure you can. What um? T posing behind them. Catch. <laughs> yeah. That's the most terrifying thing. Uh, what we got. Like hands on the hips and just hinge at the hips and just lean forward right all up in their Kool Aid and be like, "Hey guys!" and just scare the shit out of them. Oh, for sure! Like these two right here are just gonna splash right in the water immediately. Billy Am, who is more terrified of Elizabeth than you guys, whips around. He's just like, "What?" Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, honey. <laughs> He's like, I get it. You guys don't like these two at the end here have like actually latched onto the car and they have the grappling hooks like the um things and they're trying to pull back the car as fast as they can. And they know if they let go, the car sinks again. So that's where we are. Um, Billy Am is just like, um, I see. I understand that you um might want to like physically hurt us because flamingos and Wanda crew relationships aren't like where they should be and like that I feel like that's a failure in management but if you could just let us not I'd be cool with that you know you guys shot bullets at us earlier and he's just like and I we will definitely do that again I'm not gonna lie to you we're gonna shoot at you more and just like if you could just help us get this car out of here we can just start it off on a like square footing we'll shoot at you then hmm hmm that doesn't really seem to be in our best interest. So what hold, else hold, can hold you on, offer? Tori. I got this. I got this. I oh, got this. Oh god. Oh, he's like, oh, I do. I do have a counter offer. I, and he like pulls out a uh, um. It's a grenade <laughs> made of mana batteries, like, and it's like it's like a big ass bomb. It's just like my counter offer is, I throw this into that lake. And hmm. we see what happens. Um, can, can I yeah, get no. your car real quick? You're going to help me get the car? Yeah, I could probably do it by myself. Yeah, okay. What? How are you going to save? Like, go ahead. Go ahead. And then, like, you do see his, like, finger is on the pin of this, like, giant bomb. I walk up next to these two scary, like, hey, hey, guys. Let's go. Uh. Uh, okay. Billiam is like a, a low level hench dude, right? Oh yeah, Billiam's like he's definitely like a minion, he, but not a commoner. All so right. I'm gonna uh, grab the ropes that they're using, and I'm gonna start pulling on them. Here's my vision. Mm -hmm. I want a limit break to where when I get it out of the water, I'm gonna fling it around and like shot put it out. Oh, like hammer throw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My intention is to catch as many flamingos with the rope as possible and fling them with it. Can uh, yeah. oh, go ahead, Ento. What you got? Uh, so Ento Ento sees this happening and he's like, he's worried that this action will cause Billiam to uh, pull the pin. Understandable. And so he's he's gonna put them all to sleep. <laughs> he's just gonna sing a little lullaby, which which happens to be the same thing that we've already been singing. 
I am completely down for this. Uh, yeah, voice and Ento both give me twenty siders, please. I swear. We, okay, that was a I, that was a fifteen. I, I, I can only see the one underneath the fucking join voice and video thing. Okay, it's an eleven. Eleven and a fifteen. I, I see them both now. Um. So yeah, you both succeeded. Um. You see Billiam like like start to fall forward, like pat, pass out, and he just barely ducks on like his head, his nodding off is the reason that like the card swoops over his head but clocks the other four. Uh, and are you just throwing them into the mountain? Is that the plan? Cause you're hitting them all with a car. <laughs> T- tell you what, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna roll a d4. Okay, they're going into the center of the lake. Oh, into the center. Of, okay. Oh, I grabbed Antoto on accident. <laughs> and you see Billy like he's like no, I uh, and he just passes out. Your Uber's here. So he passes out, but um, lets go, I assume, of the um, grenade he has, right? So I'm. I would like that. Yeah, he's still got like a feather through the hoop, but he's asleep. I'm gonna take that. I'm feeding the fishes of the lock, right? Like, what are you feeding them? It's not Flamingo. Oh, shit. <laughs> Indeed. I mean, they're asleep, so, so I mean, they're asleep, so. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Like, and they you just hit got them hit all by with a car. car. <laughs> the ca- as the car was passing them, and it was just like, take a nap. And they're just like, as they're screaming from this roller coaster ride that they've been on all day, like, they're suddenly just, oh, time for a nap. And then they get flung out into the middle of this fucking lock. You're right, Quarry. They are sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> and whatever else. I mean, yeah, so they're wrapped in a rope that's attached to a car that's now dragging them down. Yes, that is what is happening. But, I mean, they're going to drown. Technically, we didn't kill them. The lake did. There's a chance they live. I mean, there's a chance. Yeah. It's really slim. I'm not here I mean. to find out. Katori, you see the ripplings and the waves of that car hitting the center of the lake, but you also see the lake being completely still and calm at the same time. Like, that is what is happening. Oh. Um, oh, go ahead. I, I, I don't know if we want to find out why that's happening. Uh, we should... Not press our luck. You, you, you got all his stuff, right? I, well, what kind of stuff can I pilfer from his little birdie pockets while he's out? <laughs> I'm gonna take his name tag. Damn. Oh, absolutely. You have the name, name, name tag. tag. Um, yep. You have their anomaly detector, which is... um, It looks very similar to yours, except for it definitely runs off of mana batteries, and they are using it to, like, detect the strongest sources of magic as well. And this lake is an incredible source of like some very bizarre magic. It doesn't match anything you guys have seen so far in this world. I hand that directly to Royce. Hmm. I see. Well, that might help us uh, calibrate our anomaly detector. Yes, I could probably reverse engineer it a little bit. Make ours more efficient. Uh, Patagon, this seems to be the source of the anomaly, this entire lake. Right. But it's quite large, so I'm not exactly sure what we're supposed to do. (laughs) I wonder if perhaps there's a leviathan of sorts down there that's causing this anomaly. Oh, that'd be neat. And that is a possibility. Which, if that's the case, might need to inform someone of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking at this point we 
we, we have the idea where this is. M maybe we go backtrack to the, the village and inform them of uh, what we found. Mm -hmm. You guys start hearing just crunching of that, um, the car. And like, you guys look out into the, back into the middle of it. And it's just like, Oh, red fucking like bunch of bubbles floating. <laughs> That's to the just surface. algae and a thermal vent. Yeah. And Tori's like, mm, whatever. What are we doing with this bird? Wait, is that all I got from his pockets? Um, you got orders from Elizabeth oh. that say that everybody is to follow Billy, um, Billy Am's like um commands, and if you do not come back with the goods. All of their lives are forfeit. So they weren't we going to live anyway. Tie him up and take him with us. Uh, or we could just leave him right here. I, we could also just... T we could tumble into the water. <laughs> <clears throat> also, a giant <laughs> leviathan does, like, poke its head out of the fucking, like, thing, like, with flamingos in its mouth. Oh, oh shit. I, I, I give him a, a wave. Hey, buddy, you still hungry? We have an after dinner snack. That seems it's, really cruel. It's definitely looking at you guys and it's just like trying to decide whether or not like it needs to fight you. It totally does not. We'll go. We'll Yeah. Yeah, okay. we'll, we'll just leave. We gave you those snacks. I want Gra you to know that. Gra grab him. Just... We'll we'll just go. Yeah, we'll just <laughs> Oh, so we're dragging yeah, we'll just just drag. flamingo by the neck. Through the dirt. <laughs> yeah, why yeah we'll, we'll let the villagers decide the, their fate. I mean, I'm sure they've been tormenting them. Right. Katori will just heave him up over her shoulder and like hold him by the legs, like what a sack a roller of potatoes. Coaster this has been. <laughs> All right, so you're heading up to the town. Okay, just like walk away from. Him. And again, you are dragging Billy. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, yeah. I threw him up over my shoulder. Oh, okay. Nice. You, you have Billy, though. Yes. Solid. He is in okay. my possession, I guess. <laughs> Mark that on your sheet, please. Mark, the, yeah, Mark. Add, <laughs> add Billy to your sheet, please. <laughs> it's important. I, I, don't... Club? I have a question. I mean, nothing's stopping you. Yeah, he's like, he's unconscious, so, like, I don't know. What kind of monster are you? <laughs> <laughs> We'll find out the good type, in future episodes. The good episodes. type of monster. I'm the fun kind. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you guys can just get right back. Like You can follow the path to the village, and here it is, like, ahead of you. If you're not at it yet, um, but, like, you can see it in the distance. And this picture doesn't convey the way that I really want it to look. Um, It has massive, like, poles from giant trees. And you don't see any of these giant trees in the area. Which means they have to go out and get them. And then bring them back. And like carve their stories in them. So like there are pillars. All through this town. Like that are telling the story. Of these people. Like as you get closer Katori. That weird feeling. Is like. Happening stronger and stronger. And like. Everybody else can manage to pass right through this like. Um. Little. Like, bubble, the unseen bubble. But, Katori, you... It almost feels physical to you. Like, you could pass it, but you put your hand up to it, and, like, you have to force yourself through. You realize, to, like, um... Actually, roll me a 20-sider, would you? Oof. I don't... I don't like how this sounds. Oh, I mean, you don't have to. I can just tell <laughs> you, and then it. you tell... Okay. I'm gonna do it. All right, 14, that's a success. So, like, you managed to pull your hand back in time. Okay. You see the opportunity here. Like, you know that if you walk into this village in your form as of right now, you are setting this reality. You are forever this form and always have been. This is you. But, like... In that moment, like you can take a step back and like look at it, and you see the stitching in the fabric of reality here that's not complete. Huh. Like it's you see two things layered on top of each other. You see instead of this town, you see your like 
fun people like having a good time like celebrating like sitting around like sewing circles as they existed in the seasonal world but then you also see all of these fine highland cow people that are like you see them they're waving at you from a distance and they're carving these logs out and they're having this an amazing time and they are hanging fabric from one window to another and just like gorgeous displays of just colors and just like they fit in with this place so beautifully i'm not saying that the fawns don't but like they both exist right now you know that if you walk into this city you are eliminating the fawns not that in the same way that everything else has been eliminated but will i remember them you will remember them always and you know that, and that that's what makes this choice very difficult for you. But, with a 14, you see it. Like, if you wanted to, like, and, like, in your pocket, you feel like one of those street s- seam rippers, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you know that if you wanted to, you could just rip this anomaly f- hole, like, fully open, and just... The cow people would be gone, but the fawns would be back. And you would go back to being a fawn. Oh, you are... I didn't know I rolled a tough choice here, buddy. <laughs> this is what the burrito of concern means. This this here is the burrito of concern, fellas. Uh... Hmm. <clears throat> well, um... I mean, I think that she's going to sit there and she's going to take in both the scenes um, and sort of like quickly review like what her life used to be and what it is now. Um, And oh, there it is. The Vorpal Quesadilla of Worry. Yeah, Uh, we found we found it. (coughs) We, We found it, ladies and gentlemen. So it's yeah, so Pelican pulls pocket. it out of his pocket. He's like, ah, I, I, I just this was in my pocket. I don't know where it came from, but uh, if you want half, uh, it's it's for you. Uh, I've been in there the entire time, man. Yeah. Um. You, you did so yeah, Katori's just gonna she's gonna shake her head. She's gonna clear her head out, get all that all the negativity out, and she's gonna say, "People, where we are meant to change, change is meant to happen." This has happened, so it's meant to be. And she's just going to step right through. All right. We have solidified that then. Like, mm-hmm. you you four, everybody else, Katori has never been anything other than what you know Katori is right now. What? Even for Ka- Royce? These, these four, no. These four are aware oh, okay. of what you used to be. Okay. But Katori did not come from the seasoning world, everybody. Like, that part of, like, Katori being the teacher, it doesn't exist anymore. Like, Katori is a high-ranking member, like, is the senior officer of the Magic Studies. But she was never Katori the teacher. It's Katori the, like, the Highlander, basically. There can be only one. (laughs) Oh my god. (laughs) I was so glad you made that. I was so right. We share the same brain cell. Uh, <laughs> um, well, that's depressing. It is um, depressing. You're telling me I'm going to have to live with all this knowledge while everybody else gets to be blissfully unaware. Yes. But that is the burden that we now all share. <sighs> and Toe puts a, a calming hand like a, like a there, there. I'm sorry, hand on, on Katori's arm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just so you know, that there are plenty of uh, quesadilla for any who would like to partake. He receives her quesadilla and she gives a, a very knowing and thankful nod to Ento. She's like, plus I really like to throw you guys through the air. It's a lot of fun. And I can't do it if I'm only four feet tall, so... I did gotta... enjoy uppies. Well, Jeez. don't limit yourself so much. I mean... 
but I can still stitch y'all a mean tapestry, so don't you forget for, forget about me and the muffins I used to bring to class. You're still you. That hasn't changed. Thank you, friends. Or- now let's take this flamingo and find some shit out. Let's, let's do this with our quesadillas. That's right. Well, <laughs> here. we may change, you know, we're all still ourselves, so let's go explore. Yes. Let's go be a posse of badasses. Except for me with, like, the three people in my head. <laughs> Take care of that. I mean, I, I, he is he really cool? Like, maybe maybe he's a good friend? I, I'm, I feel like I really want to wear a kilt. Oh, oh, they definitely cool. have kilts up here. Um, like, and I really, fun. really have an urge to get a get, get a caber. Yes. Let's do it. All right, shopping spree at the Highlands. Um, like, yeah. So this guy comes out to greet you. Ooh, one, give me one second. I lost my Google Doc that had names in it. Oh no! Well, we oh. can continue to talk about how awesome our team is. Uh, you guys can, because... but don't. Worry, I I found it. Oh, you found it. But yeah. we're still awesome. We're, we're still, still awesome. So Just many awesomest. Awesome. Awesomest. So this is Liam. Hello. Liam approaches you all, and he's just like, "Welcome, friends!" And he just like points at the flamingo. He's just like. That one is not welcome here. This one is a, a prisoner. Uh, we've detained him. Um, he was doing some pretty gnarly ass bad stuff. So we put you him to sleep. Threatened to blow up your lock. Yeah, yeah. They did messing what? Up, yeah, messing up Lock Nessie yeah. over there. Just Lock- yeah. He was Lock gonna Nessie. bomb the Nussie. She was gonna bomb the Nussie. <laughs> yeah. Did we brought him here so that you can... Nussie is a beautiful creature. <laughs> yeah. She's been there forever. We fed her though while we were there, so you know she's all good. Oh, well, that's but good. This one, that's good. Yeah. This this one was trying to mess mess Nussie up, so <laughs> He's we, just... we brought him here. Um Ento, can you roll me a 20 cider? I kind yeah. of forgot that you put um, one of the flamingos to sleep. <laughs> Particularly this one. Right. Um, tough choice, Ento. Um, uh-huh. What kind yeah. of dream is Billy having? <laughs> is it uh, that going to school with no pants on dream? <laughs> it's similar. It, he oh, he no. showed up in uh, uh, Elizabeth's office. But he has no feathers whatsoever, and he's no longer pink. <gasps> Whoa. What color is he? Oh my god, it, she's gonna think he's an ibis. Uh- <laughs> it, yeah, he's like... <laughs> yeah, he's he's white. Oh my god. Um, Elizabeth's here. Like, or at least a fax, like, and it's, she's really big, though, so it's not the real Elizabeth, but it is a, like, oh. it is a nightmare version of Elizabeth. Um. How does she appear Excuse to me. us? Uh, she looks like how, what, um, what Billy is scared of, which is literally, j- she looks like herself, just really big, and he's very small and, like, f- featherless. But does and she also, like poof out of mist or yeah, something? Yeah, like you see, like the mist co- uh, co- uh, congeal together, and like it smells strongly of lemons around here. Oh fuck! Ugh. Oh great. <laughs> she um she just is shouting, failure! How dare you! How dare you even show your face here, you bin chicken! You're nothing but trash. Just like. You're just like your father? Father, brother? yeah. We're, you're really just, just like, your, like father. your father. <laughs> I'm not like... Oh, no, he rolled a failure. I am like my dad. He jumps up and dies. 
Well, I guess that solved itself. Content uh, warning, everybody. Suicide. Oh, sorry, content warning. <laughs> he unalived himself. A bad dream, ha like, a dream had a bad dream and then undreamt itself. Huh. That's why he could have kept the mask <laughs> I'm just fucking around. Um, don't, don't worry, he didn't just kill himself. <laughs> oh, but he is having a fucking time of it. And so you can feel, like, coming off of him, just fear. And, like, you know he's seeing this Elizabeth. Like, you guys can see it too, but it's not, it is aimed for fully at him like if he was having a dream about like some rampaging monster you guys would be dealing with a rampaging monster but you said that he's dreamt of elizabeth <laughs> and elizabeth would not physically be attacking any of you no she she she's just calling she's us she's out. roasting us yes yep like liam is just like what is going on uh, one no moment, idea. fine, cowman. Uh, oh, how'd you know my last name? <laughs> oh, you're one of the dwarves. You've traded with the cowmans. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, you is, gotta write that down. Is Billy Am still asleep? Yeah, totally. He, you can't even like. He is not waking up, even if you like are touching him right now. He is locked into this nightmare. So even if I slap him across the face, he won't wake up. I think that's just up to. So if it works, okay. Uh, the right. way this, uh, the way the the ability works is that they're asleep until harmed, basically. Oh, oh okay. Cool. Here you go, Royce. Punch him right in the mouth. I'll hold him up. <laughs> okay, because like my other oh my train God, of Katori thought, full Nelson, this flamingo, where Royce is just decking him. <laughs> Wake up! Get awake! Wake me Wake up! up. Wake me up inside! Wake me up in the... But but you know it's not a closed fist. It, it's an open fist. All right, like, wake up. <laughs> wake like up. a backhand. If, yeah. if they don't wake up, time. I'll slap them. It, it, it's it's like the Deadpool game where he's trying to wake up Wolverine. And he's just like, wake up, get away, wake up. <laughs> it is it like the fucking like um God of War three scene where they are just like <laughs> yes, yeah. very much that. Okay, just keep mashing X and then yeah. I love that. It's hilarious. And, and how does Elizabeth take this happening? <laughs> I mean, she's just continuing to call him a failure. Absolutely and loving it. And <laughs> just, why did he even come back? He should have just drowned himself in the lake with the, you know, bad things. Sorry, kids, trigger warning. Don't do not do that. But, uh, you know, just, he he's useless to her. Why did he even come back? She's a mean person. She's a bad guy. She's so a she bad person, everybody. Really don't worry stuff. about that. Yeah, yeah. she'd say some really gnarly bad stuff. Um, she can play a bad yeah. guy. The it's playlist true. is very on point for me right now. The song The Queen of White Lies is playing. Oh, no, man. <laughs> right now it's uh, Put Your Girl Put Your Records on for me. So, like, I don't, I'm, I'm not sure what the vibe is, but... Uh, sure. But yeah, she's, uh, she's not being nice. Alright, so, like, he comes too. Like, he wakes up after being decked multiple times, and he looks up, and you guys still see Elizabeth there. She has taken, like, she has a physical form, because, like, he dreamt her into reality. And he just, like, looks up, and he's just like, nah! And, like, you see, like, stark terror, just absolutely overcome with emotion. Listen, listen to me, Billy Am. Listen to me. I would like grip his shoulders. You got to get over this. You got to learn to have some self confidence. All right. That that and he points back at Elizabeth. Is like that. That doesn't matter. You got to be better than that. What so if what? Tori just walks up and punches her. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to just walk up and punch her? I uh, no, I'm sorry. I inter interrupted Royce. He was doing cool as no go. Got to get some confidence. You need to get some self-esteem. You got to realize you're in a potential. Mm -hmm. Well, all you all you flamingos got this this issue where you're you're not good enough to to Bobberts or Elizabeth, but you got to realize that that you are, and you got to. 
think for yourselves and stop doing all their bidding and evil crap. You gotta do good things for yourself that makes you happy. Ento is going to use uh, Relieve to say something comforting to a nearby creature, leaving them of anxiety, pain, and discomfort. Um, he's going to do it to uh, Billy M. He's like, you gotta, you got to step out of her shadow. like, Both figuratively and, I guess, literally right now, because she's real big. But uh, don't worry about her, man. Like, Be your own flamingo. Okay. Katori, Royce, and Ento. Each of you roll me a 20 side of trying to like calm this guy down. Alright, so far we've got a, tw a 12, a 7, and a 4. What? The 12 is high enough. Like, you did relieve him, but like, honestly, it was Royce's like forcefulness that really got through to him. He responds <clears throat> well to authority. Uh, maybe too well. <laughs> oh no. And she's like, yes, daddy. <sighs> <sighs> That's a first. Uh... <laughs> huh. Well, well, why are you all looking at me like that? I can't even talk. Dumbest thing I've ever said in this game. Oh god, alright. So, you got like, you guys see, like, how does the Elizabeth react? Like, cause it's still physical at this point, because dream crystals are a thing. How does the, um, Elizabeth react to, like, him standing up to himself? He's like, yeah, I am alright, and my dad was a cool guy. Like, he built a giant robot, and you lost it. Uh, she's just gonna say, um, your dad built a giant trash can, and you're both worthless. Worthless to me, and worthless to the flamingos that you, um, how do I, you, um, dishonor on your family, dishonor on your cow, like, all that stuff. <laughs> like, you're just useless to us. You might as well stay here with the cow people, as you're not welcome back. Um, Liam just where? looks up. He's not welcome here. I, I like leaning into Billiam's ear. I'm just like, and yet she's got to keep using you guys because she can't do anything herself. You cost the lives of like 13 flamingos that got lost in the snow up there. We found their corpses. Like, didn't find the robot, though. You lost it. It was a glorified trash can. Also, I can do this myself. I don't need you, but I also don't want to ruin my nail polish. So, you're useless to me. You can't even command, what, a dozen flamingos I send with you? Because you have no presence. You have no power. You couldn't navigate your way out of a wet paper bag. You are trash. Oh, he has a tough choice. All right, what's the tough choice for... Uh, all right, Patagon. What is his tough choice right now in this moment? Well, um, he, he's going to be torn, essentially, you know, between like, everyone trying to, like, inspire him to, to be his own bird. But, you know, that, that overwhelming, just internalized fear of Elizabeth is, is, is pulling him back to that that place that he was trying to, you know, get out of. So, um, I, I, I think his choice is essentially going to be like, he, he can continue to, uh, to stand up for himself, but it, it's going to take essentially emotional damage is what I'm trying to get to without saying that. But <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. He's going to have to accept that some of the things she's saying are true. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And Rupert's yelling. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right, King Katori Puncher now. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Fuck her she's, up. She's just going to march right up to her and be like, your outfit is adorable, but your personality is garbage. Uh, you're the garbage you're talking about. Just sock her right in the face. Right, right in her beak. 
mess her cute hair up. Do I have to roll for that? Oh yeah, go ahead. Oh, okay. I'm typing. I, I got. There we go. I got it. Ooh, I thought that was gonna be a two, but it was an eighteen. Thank God. Yeah, so you you just like run up and just sock her right in the beak. Yeah, and I'm I'm telling her like your outfits are adorable, but your personality is not. Bam, Rinda. <laughs> Liam sees it, you like punch her in the face. He's like, hell yeah! And he just jumps up and punches her in the face too. It's like, oh shit, we're punching big flamingos, guys! And you just see like a crowd of fucking Highland cows just come charging out of them in multiple varieties of like more cow to let to more human esque, you know, like. Katori is definitely on the more human end of the cow things. So some of them look very much like minotaurs. And some of them just look like people with big ass horns. But they're big and they got big ass hooves. R- Royce gets a little tear in his eye. It's like, he's, he's just like, it's beautiful. <laughs> so, so and because, they're my like, sort of people. Reality has been set in the way that like Katori is like them. In like the hit first, ask questions later kind of way. All of them are hit first and ask questions later. Oh no. I found oh, no. them everybody. I have doomed an entire civilization. civilization My people. people. Like the fucking JoJo meme is happening for sure. <laughs> oh no. I'm so sorry I've done this. But and then no, just, I'm not sorry. You see the giant Elizabeth like start cracking like crystal and then like get broken into just powder. And just like it smells of lemon but like it is now inert. Dream dust. It worked. Okay. It worked. I'm gonna refund that for you, Gemini, because it doesn't actually make sense for this. And so, yeah, um, Liam and, like, the rest of the crowd are just, like, looking around and just like, um... What was that? It's kind of a long story, but, uh... Yeah, Party they, tricks. These... Party tricks. I, we love long stories. And he's like, they motion to the, um... The city. And, like, this is just a tall... This is a... This is one tree, by the way. This pillar here is one tree with um millions of stories carved into it. Damn. Like, there are... So it's just like, well, come on. Um, You said that you have... The... I did not mean to roll those two dice. Like, it's like, you have that one in custody. Is he going to cause any problems? Like, motioning to the flamingo guy. We look at him. You can be cool, man. You're your own bird now. I am my own bird now. He does like he does seem like a weight has been lifted off of him. He's like, I am my own person. You guys just making friends with literally every enemy I send is very funny to me. It's a little different than the last few seasons. <laughs> it's, a, it's a little different. We're shifting gears. We still punch lots of things, though. Right in the face. Uh, after right quite a few face. harshly worded letters from Kay and some of the other people, uh, yeah, I get it, I get it. Alright, so yeah, Liam shows you around this town, and it's like scenic and beautiful, and like, I had other stuff planned for this game, but you guys kind of like cut to the chase. Again! Again, Again. with you. <laughs> Team I, efficiency. I, yeah, you guys like fucking squad efficiency. Um, I thought you guys were gonna fight the Loch Ness monster, but you didn't. No. So that's. She's friend. <laughs> Listen, we need fish mommy out here to deal with it. Yep. Yes, that, 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 that definitely her. sounds like a, a lore. Uh... We're gonna hit Laura up. Be like, hey, so we got your auntie down here, who's a. Uh... Well, crazy wanted to eat people. Lore is a Leviathan, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So, um, when you guys are walking around the town, what are you looking for? What are you looking at? I because I thought the last choice of this game was literally going to be K- whether Katori like walks into this place or not, and then we were just going to end it there. But oh. you guys did that earlier on. 
which was very fun. I really liked that. But like, what are you guys like looking at in this town? Like, well, like I don't get... have the maps for, it, but I can tell you what it's like inside. I, we we got to go shopping. We got to get Royce a caber and a kilt. Kilt and caber. There's a store name that isn't there. Oh, the kilted caber? Yeah, for sure. And it is just a lo- it's just log from Ren and Stimpy wearing a kilt. Oh. I love it. Yeah. I love it so much. Um So yeah. yeah uh, like people are like shaking you guys' hands and like welcoming Katori back. Like Katori, you know their names. Like you know these people. Oh. This is your home. And you can show the crew around. Like you have memories of existing before. And some of the other crew are going to, too. Like, certain characters are going to. Like, people who knew you in um, in the Seasonings world will retain that knowledge of you. Okay. And the captain will retain that knowledge of you based on how she met you when you came through the rift. The captain knows, too. But, like, all the other crew that were not on that ship, Katori's always been this. I love well, it. Like, but like there's the museum. Well, it's not a museum so much as just like it is the hall of stories, which is just pillar upon pillar upon pillar pillar of like people's like autobiographies of what they did with their lives. And like uh, go ahead. I, I'd also like to somehow sometime over here try to plant the seed of opening up trade with the silver thimble. Absolutely. Um. So yeah, uh, let's... Do, 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 do. Yeah. I, I'd say I'm probably going to be perusing the, the museum of all the stories, you know, trying to match them up to ones that I've I've, you know, remembered or heard in passing through the, the Adventures Guild, you know, just get, get more c- context around, you know, our, our hopefully new allies. Uh, Ento is doing the same thing. He's specifically looking for stories about uh, his old crew and ship, like specifically that time that they accidentally ended up in a lock and like what they had to say about it and if there's anything else he can gain from that. Yeah, absolutely. And what's Katori looking at? That's an amazing question. I mean, I guess she's catching up with the people that she does remember. Um, she's just sort of wandering her home. Sort of trying to get to know, get like maybe relearn the area. Um, maybe talk to Liam a bit more. For sure. Um, okay. Everybody roll me a 20 cider. Don't worry, even a one isn't going to be terrible for this. It's just like. So 11, 17, 10, 5. Okay. Um, and so you find the, um, a wanted poster for Pim here. (laughs) Pim did something during that, um, that whole event. Maybe she got jumpy and shot one of them. Like, didn't kill them. But, like, you know. Like, because it can't be a wanted poster for you because you'd be arrested immediately. Yeah. <laughs> but there is definitely... Pim has an basically unanswered fucking tickets in this place. Like, she's wanted for crimes. Ento is not surprised at all. And there's just like one of the cows walks up next to you when you're looking at the poster. She's like, "Can't believe it." I mean, I'm not. Ju- I don't judge all warble tingers. It's like we've got great relationships, but a warble tinger gets on our sacred lake and does that. She's lucky that the nussy didn't eat her. Is that what we're calling the Leviathan on the lake? That, the that's Nussie. what we're calling the Leviathan on the lake. It's, it's, it's get Nussie. Nussie it's the Nussie. By the Nussie. It is, in fact, the Loch Nussie. Wood. <laughs> monster. The Loch Ness Monster. I don't like saying Nuss. It sounds even worse somehow. <laughs> <laughs> 
Alright, um, and what did, sorry, real quick, what did everybody else roll? Next one was Kira. Uh, you roll, you are having a little bit of trouble remembering everyone's name. What's one person's name that you got right, and what's one person's name that you got wrong? Oh, no, I don't know. I know, it's ter- I'm terrible, aren't I? Yes, you're the worst. Um, like, I don't know. Real I mean- tough choices. I'm going to say that I remembered, like, the name of a really sweet person, but maybe I didn't remember the name of, like, the town bully or something. Because I'm sure there's got to be a town bully, right? I actually have to name them? No, no, I, that's fine. Like, oh, okay. I think the really yeah. nice person is a tour guide that, like, takes everybody on tours, and he's amazing at it. Like... He's the okay. best tour guide. He's like he's a sweet old man. His name's Hamish. Okay. And you forgot the town bully's name. Her name is actually Fiona, but like what can you think of something that you called Fiona that's not Fiona? Nah. <laughs> like bitch tits or something. <laughs> oh, so you just called her bitch tits to her face. Yep. Like, that was yeah. the vibe she, you got. <laughs> she wants to square up again and she's just like, look. I don't care if you've been out there traveling. You're no match for me. Are you sure about that, bitch tits? Oh, she's... She's just like... uh, Mm -hmm. And like, you have made an enemy. Oh. Okay. (laughs) Dude, fuck. That's very... (laughs) Nika laughing at it was very funny to me, too. Um... Okay, and who else we got? Sept, you rolled a 17. Oh, sorry, this is this is the old man. This is Hamish, by the way. He's also Hi, the guy that voice oh. is going to have to talk to for um setting up trade. Hamish is such a nice fellow. Hamish is amazing. I love I'm calling Hamish. him Grandpa Hamish. You can call him Grandpa Hamish. Everybody does. Grandpa Hamish? Oh. <laughs> Pappy Hamish. Pappy Hamish. Oh, no. Oh, Papa Hamish. All right, Patagon. Like, you're walking through the things, and, like, some of these you can start reading the very beginning of it, and you know the entire story. You know exactly how it goes. This is a place of amazing warriors. Just absolutely stacked. And you find one of them has a hidden message in it that I don't think a lot of people understand. Only, like, direct relatives of this person and there were none when this person died and they put their caber up so like you're reading it and you've got a treasure map in your head now oh nice it's like you know where a sacred item to these people has been like not like religious to them but like this person buried a treasure um and roll me a 20 side i'll tell you what side that's on Nika, where's six? Please stay close. That sounds like fun. Alright, I'll unmute for everyone. Uh, six is east east. East east? No, wait, I'm lying. That's nine. Whoa. Upside down six. West west south? West west south. West west. I think. Okay. Oh, well, that'll be fun. West? Oh, fuck. West, west, south. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, that's it's incredibly interesting if it is what I'm thinking it is. Um, cool. And voice. How do you go about convincing um, dear Pappy Hamish that you want that, to open up trade, because they will. You rolled a success. They're going to ro- open up trade, but what are you offering them? And what are you asking from them to offer you? That's a good question. Um, Well, I'm asking. I'll ask them if they're having any difficulties with anything here. 
we are in we can't get past the the that dreadful city of consonant has showed up and honestly we're not too close with the flamingos no offense terrible flamingo friend and billy just shrugs it's like, I would like to just be called Billy, if that's okay, everyone. Like, no William was my father, and he named me after Billiam. And, like, I don't really like Billiam. He's kind of scary, too. Yeah, he is quite a uh, detestable flamingo. Neat. Well, Billy it is. Oh, thank you. It's like, well. it's like, if you could, we would like to establish a trade route around them. Like, we, d we don't want to displace anybody from their homes as, like, terrible as they are. But are you familiar with the people of, like, that live in the forest? Could we make a trade route through there? Could you secure us passage, possibly? Talking about the, uh... So the, the one north of Dyad? Yeah, the west I mean, the west of Dyad Forest. That like the dark, scary forest with the lintworm I and mean, the tetzel worm in it. And the tetzel worm's a guardian, right? Tetzel worm is a guardian of it. You guys know how to fly above the um. Yeah, you guys actually could agree to this just fine, like because the way that Nickel Lent did his game, you guys can use the airship to get to this place just yeah. fine. That's what I was thinking of, but I also want to try in the future. Because maybe I punch the shit out of the Tetzel Worm, yeah. Sure did. Well, but, Midnight, under the ownership of Gibbet, punched yeah, the shit out yeah. of the Tetzel Worm. Um, is it any sort of, like, known quantity that the Tetzel Worm is, like, an intelligent creature? Um, it is known that is intelligent but it is sadistic like it is known that it can think like a um not as much as a person like it knows people it remembers people and it can talk but it wants to consume it mm, wants mm. to guard it wants to hurt people like it disembowels people I and mean, monsters instead of like killing them flat out just so that the other things can watch it happen so everybody gets scared of it Okay. Uh, yeah, we could establish a trade route. Uh, our city has a network of uh, flying ships that allow us to go above the forest. Flying ships, you say? You're going to see a lot. You can just bypass all the cities and all that. It's quite convenient. Um, and it also allows you to trade more efficiently with the dwarves. Um, oh, we would. The... We do desperately need more trade with the dwarves. We are almost out of silver, and like he motions to a caber that is just like beautiful, like ebony wood. Like it's just basically solid black, but it is inlaid with silver writing. Hmm. He's like, this is a commission for. I'm sorry. What was your name again? Oh, my, my name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my name is Royce Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt? Oh, and he's just like, he goes into the back and he comes out with like a kilt in like the tartan, like a kilt with the tartan of yours. Like yours specifically. Your colors. He's like, this was commissioned near a hundred years ago. Oh. Uh, by... Who, may I ask? He's just like, I don't know. It said when the time comes, um, Vanderbilt will show up and claim these. And he hands you the caber and the um kilt. But I take it's, them. <laughs> it's your story written on the um caber, by the way. Everything that was in the book is on this caber. <laughs> That's awesome. And yeah, I... Th wow, okay. I think that is where this game ends. Oh, That's yeah, amazing. and... 
we are finishing up the RP stuff in the Discord. So everybody, keep an eye on that stuff. You guys did great. I read you guys like going through all the clues. It was cool. Hey, you four did amazing. I really do like this group dynamic. I'm going to do the recap for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Twinsies. We finally found out what the quesadilla is all about. Love it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it turns out it's just a warning that like the anomalies are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But that is what I'm trying to like get through to you guys. The anomalies are dangerous, and you're gonna have to make choices like that. Not all of them will be like di distinctly linked to you guys. Like this one was Katorius, but there are other ones that have to do with other characters from the game. And it's just like you have to make those decisions of what you're doing. Do you let things stay? Or do you force them back into what you want them to be? So, so we're going to have to analyze why a quesadilla appears in a pocket of somebody nearby at all these life-altering anomalies. Oh, maybe it's not always quesadillas, but it's always Mexican food. <laughs> oh, man. I like Was the quesadilla still crunchy? The Vorpal Taco Bell of worries? I, I mean, I, I personally think that it, it was exactly what you'd want to eat at that moment. Yeah, it, I guess it was. I guess it was the, like... The thing that will cure your worry. Like, if right then, a quesadilla is what you needed, it's what you needed. If you needed just, like, just a strong drink, it would have been a strong drink. Though I have to say, every single time I've ever ordered from Taco Bell, it has come with a large amount of worry. You know? <laughs> or, or, like, beforehand, you were, you were super... Uh, every time I order from Taco Bell, it comes with worry. I'm like... <laughs> yeah. Bubbles and trouble. Yeah, both of those things for sure. <laughs> I don't seem to have that problem. Ugh. I didn't until recently, and now I can't eat ground beef. I'm not allowed to. It just fucks my stomach. It, I, I, if I eat ground beef, I feel like I have food poisoning. Oh, no. no. Neat. Yeah, it's like I've developed an allergy to ground beef. Wow. So but, now I mean, chicken cool. tacos are the only thing I can eat, everybody. Oh, yeah, that's, it's not like good. Taco Bell meat is real meat anyway, right? I, that's the that's my fucking problem. It's like I'm mad that it's not even real meat and I can't eat it. <laughs> uh, Body I'm white. Sorry. Yeah. So, real quick recap. Um. So today's game was House of Memories. It was the second game in the Katori voice Ento and Patagon saga. Um, again, really liking this, um, oh, I have no idea, naturalist sea serpent, okay, um, um, I'm really liking the, the dynamic, I feel like we're finding who these four characters are, and ha having them with the only, them four be the only ones with the memories of what's going on is going to be just fun to play with in the future, um, we... Elizabeth sent a bunch of flamingos into the highlands. Um, oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, Hamish does come out, and he's just like, before before the recap, Hamish comes out and he's just like, thank you all for the... Oh, shit, no, I gave voice the caber, never mind. Yeah. That, that caber's the magic item. Like, the kilt was, the kilt was good flavor, but that caber is going to be something fun. Awesome. Um... Voice just has a bunch of weapons, though, so I've got to, like, figure out... I am amassing an arsenal. Voice is festooned with savagery. I've got it feels appropriate, so... A bone sword, a giant caber, knuckles of hell metal and silver. Uh, an ass that no one can penetrate. That's right. <laughs> we could get you a flamingo flail. I know where I could find... Billy's really, just looking around. He's like, oh, God... <laughs> Got a ring that does things that are bad to me sometimes. Uh, was that ring made by... Wait, where did... Do you remember... Do you guys remember who got that ring, by the way? Um... Simmons yeah. traded it to the devil. Oh. Sure. Uh, well, the ring I got was from my uh, tutor. Yeah, the, the other ring. The, mm. the, the other spy ring. ring. That... Yeah, yeah, I couldn't remember... Who even got it or where? That's cool. Anyway, sorry. They're spying on that devil then? They're literally spying on the <laughs> devil. I love His it. His name is Chest. 
<gasps> well, can we find out from Billiam? I want to. I want to grill this flamingo, but not literally. Like, <laughs> well, you guys, you know that he's a spy now, so you like you four can just go to the dwarf place and interrogate um, a- a- Alder. But like, you know he's a cop. spy. I'll be the bad cop. I'm the it? worst cop. <laughs> it's a good cop, bad cop, worst cop, better cop. <laughs> <laughs> Good cop, bad cop, just... worst cop, bat cop. Bat cop. And we're all just shows up in a Batman <laughs> outfit. <laughs> Swear me! Tell us what we want to know. Who are you working for? for? Where are the spies? I told you, working for, <laughs> for her. <laughs> what more do you want? What do you know? <laughs> I told you everything. <laughs> See? Why do you have shitty wings? <laughs> <It's> fucking hell. <laughs> Alright, so <laughs> Elizabeth. Oh we know is currently in control of Consonant. Like, Tom Honks is, like, begrudgingly accepting her leadership, except for he has snuck off. Like, they don't know that, though. But, canonically, Tom Honks is a taxi driver in the Silver Thimble. Um, set a bunch of flamingos into what they thought were haunted mountains. There was a, definitely an anomaly up there. And these four, with their, like, shoddy craftsmanship version of the um, anomaly detector, were just, like, now maybe there's something up here and Ento was just like well if it worked for voice maybe we just need to take Katori home and they get here they met a boggle which is like a little like Scottish goblin guy he's great his name's Tanny I, um Taddy mm-hmm. he's amazing um they beat up the shit out of a bunch of flamingos and threw a car with flamingos into a lake um they then continued north saw a bunch of flamingos fighting a banshee tried to save the Banshee, got Royce possessed by the Banshee, um, and, and then beat the shit out of all the flamingos. Then went to a lock that I was trying not to name Loch Ness, but we ended up naming it Loch Ness anyway. Loch Nessie. Um, the car had landed in Loch Nessie. Royce decided to help them by grabbing the car and beating the shit out of all of them with it and throwing them all in the center of the lake. Don't worry, they were unconscious because Ento decided to put them to sleep on the way past. They landed in the middle of it. They all got consumed by the Nussie, which is a giant leviathan that might be related to lore. I don't know. Um, Patagon has, like, come in, like, Come into like the knowledge of this place once they met up in the in the Highland town where all the cows were living. Patagon like walked through basically uh, like the story the uh, the hall of stories where all of their lives were told. And Patagon discovered that he has memories of one of them or like many of them, but one specifically. And he knows where to find like the hidden treasure that the, one of them hit, uh, hid forever ago. I. Hundreds of years ago. A voice established trade with them. Ento realized that they are um, currently hunting Pym. Katori made a lifelong enemy of bitch tits. Uh, fl- uh, w- uh, Billy Am decided to go by Billy and has decided to forego Elizabeth forever and has joined up not with the crew but with these four. So, that'll be a treat. And Katori came to the edge of this town that she knows that she grew up in and had to make the choice whether to re-put it as her own fawn people or keep them as they are today. And Katori decided, walked through this, and stitched together the realities to make this the one true reality for Katori's people that they have always been these cows. Um, and everyone that does not know Katori from the Seasonings world remembers Katori being this way always. And the crew in the chat have been on a scavenger hunt. And that was House of Memories. I'd like to thank all four of you for coming and playing. You guys did amazing. Killed it. I I feel like I dropped the ball on the last time we played, but this time I feel like we got it right. I'm I'm getting it. We nailed oh. it. 
And voice has a kilt and a caber. Yes. Sploosh. We need to design the tartan now. Yeah, de de definitely design your tartan for sure. Like, apparently the House of Voice also exists here. Wouldn't it be the House of Vanderbilt? The House yes. of Vanderbilt, my bad. Yes. Unfortunately, the cow people are hunting Pim. Pim did something wrong. We haven't actually come up with what she did wrong. I'm going to let her tell us what she did wrong, but Ento discovered that she did wrong. She done did bad. Because now, he was like, like, is she is she wanted and like to do prison time or is she just wanted for questioning? Like, what's the level of wanted? I, I think it's probably like wanted for trial and they will give her a fair trial okay. for her to explain herself, you know? <laughs> So I, I really look forward to the Highland Cow versus Katori like game. We're gonna have to get Juris to be Katori. I not I versus Pim. We're gonna have to get France. What's that? No, France said she, she must have tipped them over. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess possibly. Is that what she did when you guys were like around here? They kick you out of the lake, and um, Pim just was just like, "No, well you're all sleeping. I'm gonna knock you all out of bed." <laughs> so mean. Pim isn't mean. Pim, I'll have you know, when everybody was sleeping, went and pulled um, Karam's pants off. The correct word here um. is that Pim is a troublemaker. Trouble she indeed did make, and we. I... Ento's gonna try to figure out how to fix that. Listen, it runs in the family. Clearly, because he was asleep, she didn't have his consent. There, they, she didn't have their consent to do that. So, because they were asleep. So that wasn't funny. That that was bad. Yeah, tipping is like a crime here. It's terrible. You know how long tipping. it takes to get up with like hooves and stuff? It might be difficult. I don't know. Well, so for some of them, probably. Some of them are old. Hamish is old. Yeah, don't tip <laughs> Hamish. Whole, Hamish was one of the ones that she specifically yeah. tipped. Hamish is one of the ones that she tipped, but his house is on, like, an incline. So, like, no. when he hit the ground, he just kept rolling, and he rolled all the way into the lock. <laughs> Nussie had to rescue him. You know, <laughs> Nussie was just like, I'll save you. Alright, so yeah, that is the end of this one. Tomorrow, everybody, we are finally playing the fucking fish game. Um, that's got Akana, that's got Lore, that's got Krieg, and that has a fourth person that's not coming to my brain right now. It's Talali. It's Talali. It it's is Talali. It's called Bottom of the Deep Blue Sea. It is called Bottom of the Deep Blue Sea. That song is by, I think it's pronounced Missio. Missio? Missio. It's but thank good. you guys. You should listen to it. You should listen to it. You should listen to all the songs. You guys should listen to the playlist that I put together for this game. Like, it's yes. got a lot of songs on it. I'll it drop does. it in the workshop channel again in case you guys haven't listened to it. But it's good. Well, some of it. It's also got fucking a Backstreet Boys song and a Dave Matthews Band song on it. I don't recommend those two. Not every song is a bop, <laughs> but most of the songs you can, are a bop. You can skip those two. All right, then we're right, going to wrap here, and we will see you guys tomorrow for Bottom of the Deep Blue Sea. Thank Bye. you guys so much. Thank you all. Bye forever. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Thank you. It's a good game. <laughs>